It is a world of darkness. The sin of Cain has spawned the cursed horror that stalks the night in search of living blood. The kindred have long been a secret influence through all ages of human history, plotting against each other in a never-ending jihad. Their immortal progeny are among us to this day, hidden from the eyes of humanity by an elaborate masquerade. Heaven's cause. This wound and must rest. I must return to my. Oh, my Lord, peace, I beg thee. Thy brave captain left a letter before thy sword brethren continued on their crusade. I thank thee for this news, my lady, and for thy care. Surely thou hast drawn me back from the jaws of death itself. Twas the Lord that saw fit to spare thy life. We humble sisters simply attended thee. Oh, Sister Ineska is too modest. She ministered to thy shattered body day and night, long after all others had given up hope. She did indeed restore thy life. I am Archbishop Giza. Thou hast done great service for Christendom, young sir. Tonight I shall make prayers of thanksgiving that thou live, and may send more sinners to hell. I offer thee all my gratitude for thy service. I am in thy debt. The rosy life in thy cheek is payment enough. Mighty walls of Prague once held all demons at bay, but the Schlachter have overtaken a silver mine to the east. With a haven so close to the city, they boldly walk the streets by night to kill, and worse than kill. Many have been dragged alive from their homes for some unspeakable purpose. I will never let them take thee. Oh, sir. Tomorrow, I shall venture into the silver mine and flush the vermin from their holes. Thou must not. Thy wound is too great. Nay, I am resolved. They will pay in blood for the fright they have given thee. Oh, sir, should they harm thee, my heart... Come away, Ineska. Thou hast wasted enough of good Sir Christoph's time with thy idle chatter. Christoph, the Lord smiles upon thy wrath. 
I shall pray for thy victory. I shall not fail. My good kinsman Christoph, thy bravery carried the day in the Battle of the Moravian Hills. Thy sword brethren crushed the pagan barbarians and now chased their scattered hordes into eastern Hungary. Once the last of the heathens are routed, our garrison shall return to Prague, and thou mayst rejoin our ranks. Until then, the tender ministrations of the Holy Sisters shall revive thee, if it be God's will that thou outlive thy wound. Thy fellow sword brethren pray for thy swift recovery, for they cannot allow thee to ripe and rot in decadent luxury whilst they sacrifice themselves. Perhaps thou canst make thy sword arm useful to good Archbishop Giza until such time as we return to collect thee. May the tidings of the Lord be upon thee, Sir Cuthbert. Oh, sir, I pray for thy safety on so perilous a journey. The cheerful daylight world belies the horrors that prowl by night. How can the good people of Prague go about their business with such evil abroad in the land? Hail and well met, Crusader. Hail and well met to thee, Knights of St. John. Tis good to hear the voice of a fellow Frenchman. We knights of St. John are far from home, and I would we were back in France. Say not so. We should gladly go to the ends of the earth in service to our Lord. Good day to thee. God save and protect thee, his soldier, his wrath, and vengeance. Hail, good sir knight, and welcome. They do say you seek to cleanse the minds of evil. Oh, these demons have brought great suffering to the good people of Prague. Our craftsmen have no silver for their wares, and many proud families now beg for their bread. Please, accept all that my humble end can provide, and the blessings of the Lord be upon your quest. Oh, Smithy, now I may replace my war-weary armor. Hail, good sir blacksmith. I am Christoph of the Sword Brethren, and I seek to replace armor lost in battle. Ho there, young crusader. I be Jiri Bonajo, and the very boards of me humble shop are honored to be trodden by a sword brethren. And who will ye be slaying in your new armor? I seek to slay the demons in the silver mines to the east. You look a bit sickly, sir Christoph. If ye do seek to spill the blood of the fiends in the mine, ye'll be needing special protection. The protection of the Lord suffices. I need no more than that. Ha! Tell that to your armor and sword. Nay, tis gypsy charms I be speaking of. Aid from a gypsy? Can such a thing be godly? Why? Did not King Saul seek out a wise woman and her familiar spirit in his time of need? Yea, that very King Saul, who had once banished all witches, sought a witch when he needed to learn of his future. She summoned the spirit of Samuel the prophet, and no mistake, tis in the Holy Bible. There is wisdom in thy words. I will go to this gypsy. You must promise me that the gypsy will come to no harm by my telling. I promise. Go ye to the Golden Lane, where you'll find an herbal shop run by the old gypsy woman, Unorna. There ye shall find something to aid ye surely. God be with ye, young one. The shop of a gypsy witch. Dare I enter such a place? Hello, young one. What is it you desire? I desire only to bring the Lord's justice to the evil that has befallen this city. I would know of the devils that rule the night in Prague. They are vampires. The undead. The blood drinkers. The fiends to hide their miserable carcasses away in mines and crypts under the earth. For the very rays of the sun 
to scald the flesh from their bones. It is quite a sight and a stench, the like of which you'll ne'er forget. Then perhaps I shall show them the glory of the breaking dawn before dealing them their final mercy. Their bones cannot kill the thieves. Lest their heads be cleft from their undying bodies, you will need more than a buckler of faith to aid you. Go with God, young one. And be sure to be within the warmth of a hearth when the sun falls, for the foes you have seen are but a small part of the wickedness that walks the streets of Prague by night. I shall send all such wickedness back to hell. Take care outside the gates of the city, good Sir Knight. For all those that wander the highways alone after nightfall are seldom heard from again. Even the strongest of warriors have disappeared. The streets of Prague are no longer safe after dark. But beyond the city walls, all hell walks the night. Hell that disgorges from yonder castle of Viserot. Beware the mines, Crusader. If mere men could kill the Hellspawn, we knights of St. John would have slain them long ago. We lock these gates as the last rays of the sun die in the mountains. Pass within before dark, or wait without until dawn. I pray for thy safe return. These cards still hold their oar. The diggers have fled this place in haste, and the fiends have not seen fit to continue such honest labor. The odor of freshly mined earth is laden with the foul stench of death. What mystery lies moldering here? This poor soul died without a wound, save a bit of blood at the throat. Wild dogs? Nay! Rats! I reclaim this treasure from the clutches of evil and reconsecrate it to a godly purpose. Blasphemy! Let the builders of this mockery of a holy cathedral show their wicked faces. Out, blaspheming wretch! Taste the steel of righteousness! I am Aldra, the unliving, and I bid you welcome to my domain. I have found thee an inhospitable and ungrateful God strike thee down, she-devil! Accursed creature! Earth has no room for such as thee! Nay, all the earth is all dominion. With every passing day on them we swell, we shatter all defenses and corrupt all holy places. So we shall rule all the world, and everyone, mortal and canine alike, will tremble at our coming. Hellspawn, the purity of the holy places protects them from thy evil. Purity can be sullied, and holiness can be defiled. The masseuse of the visible shall awaken soon. Ye shall defile all that is pure, and leave corruption in his weak. In defilement lies his strength. Purity is sweet meat to him, as thy rich blood is sweet wine to me. Die, thou damned beast. God hath spat thee out of heaven in ancient times, and now I scourge thee from the earth. Die, and burn far from the sight of God. Redemption of our Lord is forbidden to the likes of thee. Thou hast no home now but in the eternal torments of hell! An amulet of St. Jude. Tis an omen. If I redeem so holy a relic from this ungodly tomb, 
Surely the saint shall grant me his favor. Who comes there? Ah, the crusader ends his day in retreat. Back for another rest in the nunnery? All of Prague may rest. I have claimed the head of the demon queen. Praise be to Christoph, champion of Prague. I am newly returned from the silver mines. The evil therein is no more. The splendor of the Lord rains down upon thee, Christoph. I give thee this wrought silver cross for thy labors. I would hear all thou knowest of Vampire Lord, that I might fight them more wisely. They are evil. That is all thou need knowest. I do not corrupt my soul with knowledge beyond that. I thank thee. Hurrah! Hurrah for Christoph! The mines are safe again. I'll hail the crusading hero of Prague. Hurrah! We thank thee for restoring the mines. We finally have new silver to craft and sell. God bless thee, Sir Christoph. My heart warms to see the good people rejoice so, and yet Osra's words chill me to the core. I fear that evil endures in Prague. Good morrow, my lady. Good morrow, my lord. We give thanks that the mines are restored to godly condition. And we rejoice to see thee in health after such danger. Yet there is danger in health, for I must forego thy tender ministrations. My lord. Yet now I suffer a new affliction, for which thou hast the only cure. I shall serve thee in any way I can, my lord. I desire... I have retrieved a sacred relic, my lady, the amulet of St. Jude. I would give it thee, my lady, for thy devoted care. I take no gifts. The Lord's work is favor enough. It is the dearest of all I have, and thou art the dearest of all I have not. Please, keep this for my sake. <clears throat> uh, good day, Archbishop Giza. Explain thy intentions toward good sister Ineska. I command thee to speak only truth before God. I find her the fairest of all God's creatures, and bemoan the cruel fate that hath placed her beyond my reach. In another time and place, we might have found happiness together as man and wife. Such thoughts are evil. Thy concupiscence damns thy soul and dooms Aneska. I command thee, purge such lusts from thy heart. If not for thy sake, then for hers. Do not tempt her away from her holy orders, thou wicked, selfish boy. She is out of thy star and is not for the likes of thee. Her place is with me, with us, here in the convent. And thy place is out in the wilderness, striking the fear of God into the hearts of the heathen. If thou art strong enough to entertain such lusts, thou art strong enough to return to thy regiment. Alas, they are too far away. Hmm. Well, the streets of Prague are still host to unclean demons. Perhaps thou shouldst destroy these abominations to expend some of thy hot blood. I must protest. My place is here. The demon queen confessed they sought to defile holy places. Tis my duty to protect these hallowed grounds when next they attack. Thy Archbishop shall dictate thy duty. Hunt them in the streets. I obey, but I shall protect the streets in front of the cathedral and convent as well. Hmm. I shall be watching thee, thou immoral lad. and sing your praises for the slaying of Asra, the unliving. Without thy lore, I could not have slain her, so I thank thee for thy wise counsel. But Asra said many things that did shake my soul. I would have benefit of thy lore. Ask thy questions. Know thou of the Zemitsi? 
of the 13 great vampire clans. The fiends of Clan Semitsi be the most vicious. They come from the dark Carpathian mountains, where ancient evil slumbers. They seek to rule mortals as cattle and abduct us from the streets at night. They cruelly craft the flesh to fashion monsters, which they call Shlakta. To extend their rule into daylight, they do corrupt mortals with wealth and power and their own demonic blood. When the mortal servants do drink the blood of their masters, they become Wolves that live forever. So long as they drink each day their daily blood. In the oldest ghoul lineages, like the royal Premisil family, children are born as revenants. Mortals born with vampiric blood coursing in their veins. Know thou of the Methuselah Visceron? Methuselahs are among the most ancient and powerful of all vampires. Alas, I know nothing of the Methuselah of Viserad, save that Viserad Castle is the foul heart of the evil Zemitsi vampire clan. But don't you be going there, young one. Even an army of thy sword brethren could not dislodge such evil. What means she by canite? So every mother's child knows of vampires. Very few know they are descended from Cain and raised by the first woman created by God. Do not blaspheme so about Adam and Eve. Ha! <laughs> not Adam and Eve. Adam and Lilith. Lilith was Adam's first wife, and a spirited woman was she. <laughs> now, Adam wanted Lilith to serve under him, and Lilith spurned such bumpkin courtship, <laughs> leaving him for the company of angels and devils. So, God did fashion Eve, who was meek and mild, but their children were far from gentle. When Cain slew his brother Abel, God cursed Cain, saying that the food that grew of the earth would no longer sustain him. Only blood, like the blood he spilled from Abe, would slake his thirst. Lilith found the outcast Cain and taught him to harness the powers of heaven. God made Cain the first vampire, and Cain made all the rest by preying on the descendants of Seth, Adam's third son. And so, all vampires are called Cainites, but only by those who know more than the church tells. I cannot pay heed to such strange notions. You will heed me. If you would hurt them. What lore hast thou of these demons? The vampires do prey on mortals, but they do save their real hatred for other vampires. The thirteen great vampire clans are forever at war. Clan against clan, elder against children in a fearsome jihad shake the world to its foundations with their hate and twist up the destiny of mortals into their dark tapestry. I thank thee. Oh, tis the little warrior. I... I'll let you this. Within the convent, Aneska, I will protect thee! 
The Archbishop be damned! Ah! Christoph, thou hast brought evil into this holy place. This taint follows thy soiled soul. Ah! It burns. The she cow's vile purity burns like unto the sun! Back to the abyss, hell spawn. Thou art anathema in the eyes of God. Die and be damned! Away with thee! We forbid thee to defile this holy place! It appears that I am once again in thy debt, brave sir, for coming to us in our time of need. As I am in thy debt, for saving my life with thy tender care, and for thy uncommon valor in standing with me against the forces of hell. I pray, my lord, that thou art always near to deliver us from this evil. Milady, I pledge my arm to thy cause for as long as I draw breath and beyond. Then I have faith in the safety of our humble convent. His skill is great, and he fights with the strength of a demon. His courage has opened the minds again. Think how the gift of Cain would enhance the might of such a man. I. He has done great service to the Promethean cause by dispatching Azra without our involvement. But this decision must be made with surpassing care. With so many of us missing, we need his sword in the coming tumult. The other clans are surely considering him for the embrace by now. No doubt. But hast thou forgotten the power the Church wields over the minds of these mortals, Cosmos? His faith is the strength behind his steel. Stripped of his faith, would he be of any use to us, I wonder? He has been cut from the herd by his wound. He's been separated from the heart of his sword brethren by many miles. Like any stray, he is more malleable. He may bend rather than break. Thou art wise, Cosmas. How well thou knowest the hearts of men of war. Yet, I am not convinced. The Premisils are enraged at his continuing interference in their plans. I have learned that they have now placed a rich bounty upon his head. He'll not outlive the next moon. Get thee to the Prince, and tell him that this night, Ekaterina the Wise awakens another into darkness. Thy will is done. And Cosmos, should this Kristoff falter or fail, he must fall. Lady Ineska, I must speak with thee. Hush, lest thou rouse the convent with thy clamor. I have wandered the city for hours, yet each turn of the streets did lead me back here. My lord, tis dusk. Thou shouldst not be out of doors. Fiends shall soon be legion. I would fight all fiends of hell to stand at thy door. And, and how may our holy order assist his lordship this eve? Milady, thou must hear me. I sought to tell thee once before, but fear took my voice. What power could daunt the man who hath faced demons from hell? The face of an angel from heaven. Oh, my lord, I... Thou hast stuck me a wound that heals not. My life's blood pours out before me, and I cannot stench it. I do love thee, fair Ineska. I do love thee with a passion I have never known. My lord, I must protest. Such love is an affront to heaven. If thou deny me, I am undone. I... I cannot deny thee. I, too, am afflicted with a wound for which thou art the only cure. Ah... Uh. My soul fell when first I beheld thee, and now my heart is cleft in twain. My love of God and my love of thee have torn me to ribbons, for I must betray one to keep faith with the other. Thus my sins do pour out before me, for I have spilt my wickedness upon thy innocent bosom. Nay, tis my wanton desire that hath ensnared thy virtuous heart. I was a fool to confess my heart to thee. Gladly would I imperil mine own soul, but never thine. Then truly we are lost. Our souls are beyond all hope of redemption. My lord, look thou at the locket thou didst give me. Tis the locket of St. Jude. 
the patron saint of lost causes. Thus fate makes a bitter mockery of our plight. Say not so. Where the saints tread, hope follows. Mayhap St. Jude shall bring us hope past all hope. I pray we find a way. I pray so too. Thy hopeful words have filled my heart with courage, and I can leave satisfied. Farewell, fair Aniska. Nay, the streets are not safe at night. Thou must stay here in the convent till the sun shines again. May God have mercy upon my soul, for the devil has just placed into my heart the most impure of notions. I do tremble to confess it, but I feel I would cast away all holiness to stay. I would exchange an eternity of heaven's bliss for one night by thy side. Oh, oh, know thee that thou art not alone in such desires. Then truly, I am damned. I am condemned for my lust. But I must not drag thee into the abyss with me. I must flee this holy place and return no more. My lord, come back! Thou struggles nobly. I love such passion. A lesser man could not even speak in my grasp. What art thou? A demon sent from hell? I am here to save thee, Kristoff. To deliver thee from thy mortal shackles. By the power of the Lord Eternal, I banish thee from my presence. Poor child. Thy faith died long ago. Amidst a dread battle, thou came to know thy true nature. Thou art a killer of men no matter how thou dost try to justify thy deeds. Thou kills not when compelled by God, but when ordered by men. Now come to me. I am the mother of thy rebirth. I know thy ways, demon, and I have lore enough to kill thee. Nay, thou art helpless in my hands as a naked babe. Nay! Beg of thee, I thirst, I starve. I am Ekaterina the Wise, Ekaterina the Promethean, Ekaterina the leader of the Brujar clan. We are the children of Cain, and now thou art one of us. God have mercy on my soul, I am damned. Steady now, whelp. Thou lackst the strength to fight, and I would slice thee in twain without hesitation. Thou must feed, my child, before the hunger overtakes thee and drives thee mad. <gasps> Am I now a miserable demon, stealing blood to live? Damned and cursed to hell. Is this all that remains of noble Kristoff? Nay, my child. There is far more to thee than ever before. Thou art Bruja now. We Bruja are the philosophers of Cain's lineage. Where other clans treasured gold and trinkets, we sought pure wisdom. We strove to unravel the thorny knots that bind the very gates of heaven. Are we damned? Nay, 
We are exalted. In fabled Carthage, we lived in concordance with all mortals. Together we sought the secrets of Eden, that the children of Cain and the children of Seth would be raised up. But the hated Ventru grew jealous of our power. The patrician clan betrayed us and tried to destroy us. We survived, but fabled Carthage did not. Despite this great loss, we Prometheans continue our search for harmony with all mortals. We are the most noble of our breed, Christoph. We seek only the fulfillment of the dream that was Carthage. But we need thy help to achieve this goal. A war lies ahead. A terrible battle that calls for warriors like us. Wars among devils do not concern me. We will cause thee to think otherwise, Welp. Enough, Cosmos. The Bruja blood needs time to cool. Come, let us leave our young one to think upon his situation. But know this, Kristoff. Thou would have been killed or embraced by our enemies on this night. We have given thee life eternal, and awakened thee to the true face of thy world. I do not expect gratitude, but our clan requires loyalty or death. There is no life in me. Even my heart has ceased to beat. My very soul has been stripped from me. There is nothing left for salvation or damnation. Thou needs must pledge fealty to thy new mistress. I am newly remade and know little of this world. I agree only to follow thy lead for the present. Such rebelliousness is unseemly in Abruja. I do not like such willfulness in my children. He displays as much fealty as can be expected from such a one, Katarina. Very well, Cosmas. Then thou may hold his leash. We shall see if he takes instruction with more deference. Kristoff, thou must understand that our enemies are legion and none more vile than Clan Zamitsi, which infests Prague like a plague. The fiends seek thy death in payment for the slaying of Azra and her Shlakta servitors. If thou art to survive, thou must quickly master the powers of thy blood. Thou must pay heed to all our laws, or thou wilt become a gibbering monster like the Zamitsi. Our first law. Mistress Ekaterina, I crave thy indulgence. Kristoff is a man of action. His learning shall be the greater on the field of battle than the parlors of the Prometheans. Let me take him on my mission to Garanal's Haven, where he may learn our ways firsthand. I could use a stout broadsword protecting my back. Kristoff is not yet ready. Verily, he is as ready as he shall ever be. I would have thy counsel, Cosmos. Kristoff is no Bruja philosopher. His hot blood cools too much when he has no mission and curdles. Send him forth. If he survives, he will have mastered our ways. Very well. Kristoff, go thou with Wilhelm Stryker. Trust what he says if thou wouldst outlive the night. Go, my swordsman, and strike deep into the lair of our dear ally, Garanal the Cappadocian. Time to cut thy teeth, fledgling. Ekaterina is a scholar, not a warrior born. She would keep a fledgling studying vampire lore in her nest till Gehenna comes, and never hurl them from the nest to test their wings. But I cannot spend hours debating canine wisdom in a university. Give me a stout broadsword in my hand, and the sweet taste of my foe's blood on my tongue, and I have all the wisdom I need. And I suspect thou art akin to me. I am not akin to thee, Blood Guzzler. I strike only those that deserve my steel. I do not murder the innocents to gorge on their blood. Thou shalt feed upon blood or thou shalt die, but thou need not kill to do so. Drink only so much blood as will sustain thee. Suffer thy prey to live on, for to kill during the feeding is to violate our Promethean ethic, and that way lies the beast. The beast? A beast born of Cain's sin doth coil within thy breast, Christoph. Keep it at bay, or be lost forever. Acts of cruelty unleash that beast until it rules thee, as it rules many of Azra's kin. The beast made the madman? 
Nay, the mad vampires are called Malkavian. Shouldst thou meet one, God help thee. Shouldst thou need his assistance, God cannot help thee. Nay, the beast is not mere madness, but demonic possession by the curse of Cain. We Prometheans are wayfarers in the land of the beast, but we stray not from the road of humanity, the Via Humanitas. By our acts of compassion are we saved from the jaws of the beast. Remember this always, or be devoured from within. Thou hast life everlasting, so long as thou keepest thy pallid flesh hidden from the sun's hateful rays. The life-giving sun only brings death to the likes of us. Each day we must retreat to our haven in the chambers below the university. I grow faint. The hunger overcomes thee. The beast strengthens as thou weaken from lack of blood. Canst thou feel him uncoiling in thy heart? Thou must feed. Feed or die, Christoph, for I shall kill thee before I let the beast claim thee. These powers tempt me to dark acts. How easily could I rain devastation on all who vex me. Thy fear and thy power conspire to make of thee a beast. Seek thee an anchor for thy humanity, a rock to cling to when storms come. Anezka. Love for a mortal is the most dangerous of all anchors. I must see Anezka. That is most unwise. The cheerful world of daylight is lost to thee. I must see her again, just to look upon her for a moment. Ekaterina would not be pleased. Oh, very well. Shouldst thou display valor on our mission this night, I shall take thee to the convent but only for a moment to glimpse her as she sleeps. Now come, our mission lies ahead. Behold Petron Hill Monastery, haven of the Cappadocian vampires in Prague. The monks are vampires? Nay, the Cappadocians lurk in the desecrated crypts below the monastery, out of sight of the monks who provide them with fresh blood. Only those monks that serve Garanol know the real master of the monastery. What is our mission? A mission of misfortune. Wise and noble Garanol is friend and ally to Ekaterina. I take no pleasure in storming his home, but Ekaterina has divined that the Cappadocians have stolen from her. We seek to retrieve a precious fragment of the Book of Nod, the wisdom of the ancient Cainites. Why would Garanol steal from her? We know not. Until we learn all, we cannot let them know we serve Ekaterina. The Cappadocians are a strange clan, Christoph. They seek to understand death and the secrets of the grave. Prepare thyself. Their halls are guarded by the walking dead. The stench of death taints this holy place. Tis fitting for the clan of death. Ah! Behold, the mural depicts Cain as God's favored son. Every child knows that Cain's sacrifice of grain vexed the Lord, and Abel's sacrifice of the blood of a lamb satisfied the Lord. But mysterious old Cainites tell us that the Lord craved blood and reveled in Cain's second sacrifice, the blood of his brother Abel. The Lord raised up Cain over the other sons of Adam. He freed him from plowing the earth for food and set a mark on him that he live forever. Garanol devoutly believes this Cainite heresy which holds that the curse of Cain is truly a blessing. And thou, dost thou believe the Cainite heresy? If I am favored of the Lord, the angels have not seen fit to tell me of it. Thou dost fight thy allies with great zeal, Wilhelm. I take no pleasure in it. I just do what must be done. The only one I will not fight is Garanol, the leader of the Cappadocians. I chose to strike this knight because Garanol and his assistant Serena have an audience with the Cainite Prince of Prague, Rulof Brandel, and will not be here. More dark worship. Is there no end to the vampiric taste for blasphemy? Geronald celebrates the transfiguration of death, but I do not share his fondness for the grave. I have died once to become a Cainite, and do not seek to die again. An earthen floor blankets this room. Aye. The Cappadocians do bury their newly embraced in a ritual of death. Ugh. 
key. A key in the form of a finger bone. My newest child, Mercurio, hath proved a tainted blessing. Though he is ambitious and untrustworthy, he has added much to the protection of this house. He drinks the power of death with an unquenchable thirst, and could become the greatest student of the grave, but he hath little respect for our ancient alliances with the other canines, and could reawaken old feuds. The ungrateful puppy even seeks to seal his crypt from me. Does he not know that I can crack his sealed crypt at any time with my anointed skull of the Lamia? Alas, but I do require Mercurio's aid until such time as I can fathom the secrets of the Golem and gain its protection. I would that I had the lore of Rabbi Mordecai ben Judah to aid my experiments, but as I lack the wisdom of the Kabbalists, I would deal with the devil himself in these parlous times. If Mercurio is charged with the protection of this haven, I wonder that we have not yet faced him. I would have words with this Mercurio. Venerable Garonel should not have to rely upon an untrustworthy child. What beast once wore this skull upon its neck? What? How comes thou here? Flee now, and the great Mercurio will not smite thee. So, hiding like a rat in a hole, whilst thy kin fight valiantly in defense of thy theft, thou art a clotpole of a coward. I hide not. My work is too important. Work thou hast interrupted. I shall crack open the Tree of Life and uncover all the secrets of death and life. Canst thou restore mortal life to a vampire? Soon, very soon, I shall have such secrets. Smite thy Bruja ally, and thou shalt be the first to be restored when the secrets of death are mine. Nay, thou art false. Give us the Nod Fragment, or my blade shall teach thee the secrets of death. Nay, thou wilt tell Garanol of my theft. Tis better. Bury thee in a secret grave, with stakes of oak piercing thy heart, and a wraithworm shall hollow out thy noble brows and robust cheeks. To the abyss with thee! To the abyss with thee! The signs of Gehenna, Canto 4. So too, our grandsires will rise from the ground. They will break their fast on the first part of us. They will consume us whole. What means this dire portent? This is a great secret known to a few wise vampires. The Book of Nath tells us that the 13 ancient founders of the vampire clans will one day rise from their age-old sleep. When these antediluvians emerge from Torpor, they shall fall upon us, their descendants, and gorge their unholy thirst upon our blood. The day they rise is called Gehenna, or the Winnowing, and it signals the end of all that is. We know not how to prevent it, but even now Ekaterina searches for a way. Why didst thou not tell me of this? With such evil barking at our heels, we must hasten our work. Forgive us. Most young Cainites are not ready to hear it. They mistrust their sire, and that we cannot have. The reeky, bat-fouling old Potok fears that I seek to betray him. But he shall not know with a certainty until the last of his sludge blood oozes from his pus-ridden corpse. The old maggot pie needeth my power in defense of his withered haven, and shall overlook my indiscretions. So I must keep his mewling household in a frenzy, defending themselves from aggrieved villains. I shall steal from the beslubbering Bruja to draw their wrath upon him. However, should his crusty majesty plumb the secrets of the Golem, he shall need me no longer. So, I shall pollute the rabbi's gall-faced Golem with grave rot, making it useless to him 
Then shall I drink the old leper's blood before the moon hath fully waned. Garonal's search for wisdom has not trespassed into our haven. Twas his false servant, Mercurio. We were fortunate to find the fragment before another clan could learn of it. Others might not have spared Garonal in the search. We must hurry. Dawn approaches. The sun is a destroyer now, Kristoff. Remember this. During the day, thou must find a place to rest where no sunlight can enter. Let us return to the university where Katarina shall surely celebrate our triumph. I cannot share thy pleasure over such a deed. Come now. Before thy embrace, did thou not slay evil creatures? Behold! Thy mission survives even thy death. That is scant solace for the loss of my soul. Thou dost brood too much upon events thou cannot change, Christoph. Seek consolation in our Promethean mission. Bury thy woe in the blood-drenched soil of battle. I have found that the fury of war weaves enchantments that soothe even the most troubled heart. Kindred and kind alike. I well know the seduction of warfare. Then thou knowest the joy of cutting a bloody swath through thy foemen. The only joy I felt was in doing the work of heaven as a soldier of God. I have done nothing to warrant this fallen state. How can God allow men to become demons? How can God snatch away the promise of salvation? God allows the innocent child on the battlefield to cry and does nothing. So why should God prevent the misery of a killer like unto thee? I, I do not know. I have not considered these things. Come, I promise thee a trip to the convent, but make haste. Dawn comes quickly. Christoph? My love? Thou art accursed, if Christoph be thy love. Nay, do not go, my lord. Let me look upon thee. Good my lord, forgive me. I was filled with fright to behold thee. My comely face is now sicklied over with a pale cast, and I scarcely recognized thee. Forgive me. Thou hast been gone so long, we feared for thy life. Thou feared aright, for I am dead to the world, and my soul is lost. Do I behold a ghost? Nay, I touch thy arm. And I know thou art flesh and blood. Not flesh, only blood. My lord, thy words do fill my heart with fear, and I tremble. Good my lord, why dost thou look so strangely upon me? My mind is filled with thoughts of such base villainy. My hunger for thee is stronger now than when my heart did pump its own warm blood. I know not what misfortune weighs so heavily upon thy soul, or has driven the rosy warmth from thy cheek, but the heavenly powers can banish all such darkness. Should they banish this darkness, they would banish all that is left of me. Say not so. My lord, I know thy heart, and thy soul is pure. My heart, my soul. Thy words torment me with remembrance of all that I have lost. I was a fool to have come here. I must never return to a house of God. Nay, I pray thee stay. My honored lord, thy soul is in peril. My honored lady, my soul is lost. My cause is doomed, and I am damned. I go. I will not look upon thee again. Then I pray thee, my lord. Receive this token of me. Tis but a small amulet of St. Jude. Thou didst give it me, and it hath soothed the pangs of mine own heart that began when first I beheld thee, and a desperate, hopeless love did grow in my breast. Mayhap it will be some consolation to thy doomed cause. Art thou deaf, woman? My cause is lost! Therefore do I offer thee the amulet of Jude, patron saint of lost causes. Oh. Thou sweet heavens, guide him. A comely young sister did come to me from the convent. A clever lass she was, 
and more valorous than many a young warrior. She bade me give thee this letter. My dearest Kristoff, I have spoken to the old gypsy, a woman of great lore and learning. She hath told me much of the way of the Knights. She has heard that the soul is not truly lost after the horrid blood ceremony. There is hope even in unlife. The elder Knights know of the secret, and thou too may learn of it. I live for thy redemption. Thine in faith, Aneska. Hello, young one. What is it you... But hold. You do look so strangely. Oh, they have hurt you. The Knights have taken ye for their own. Oh, my poor boy. But fear not. Unorna neither feels ye nor casts ye out. I'll help ye, if I can. This is most excellent, Willem. Our alliance with the Cappadocians shall strengthen when I reveal Mercurio's treachery to Garinol. Willem, thou art a Bruja of surpassing splendor. Our grandsire Bruja himself would feel pride at this. In modesty, mistress, I could not have done it without Christoph's aid. He has done well. Christoph performed admirably, my sire. I believe he is ready to know of the oncoming struggle. What struggle is this? The Jihad. The great war of all the vampire clans. The Zemitsi against the Tremere, and us against both. The Tremere? The Tremere were once a house of mages, part of the Order of Hermes. They stole Cain's gift from an ancient of our kind, an antediluvian, one of Cain's grandchildren. They seek to infiltrate and control all the world. They couple the power of Cain with the ways of unspeakable magic. The fiends from the Carpathians, the Zemitsi, are fighting the Tremere even as we speak. The Zemitsi have invaded the ancestral homelands of the Ventru, which puts us in a strange alliance with the very Ventru who destroyed our great city of Carthage. So, we unite with the Vampire Prince of Prague, the Ventru Rudolf Brandl, for now. Thou hast reason to hate the Ventru as well, Christoph. Thou fell in battle against the pagan barbarians because the Ventru made puppets of thy leaders. The Ventru sent thee into battle to stop their Tsimitsi enemies. Most of the barbarians were revenants, ghoul servitors of the Tsimitsi. Other clans maintain havens here in Prague. Thou hast met the Cappadocians. The Nosferatu lurk below the graveyard in the northern quarter. Most of King Otakar's family, the Premisils, are Zemitsi ghouls. With the entrance of the Tremere into Prague, a struggle is bound to ensue, leaving the mortals greatly abused. We must avert this horror. Many in Prague have disappeared, including Bruja. We suspect they fell victim to the Zemitsi fiends or the usurping Tremere. We must stop the abductions. First, we must seek to undo the damage done by the traitorous Mercurio. Mistress, I wish to approach the Jewish quarter and warn the rabbi of Mercurio's meddling. If their golem hath suffered the cowardly attack, it may not be able to protect the Jews from the Tzimitzi. We have no alliance with the Kabbalists in the Jewish quarter, and they have powerful charms of faith to wield against our kind. We have a duty to protect the mortals. Should we deliver unto them this news, mayhap the Jews will owe us a boon. But we have much to do first. In three nights' time, thou may deliver thy message. Take Kristoff with thee, but beware. The Kabbalists have no love for the likes of us. Three nights' time may be too late. After one mission with Wilhelm, thou hast become very like him. So be it. Wilhelm, take Kristoff to the Jewish quarter this night, and warn the rabbi. Save us! Our own golem has gone mad! Can the rabbi control this brute? Yes, but the rabbi is dead. I am his son, Mendel. Tell me how to kill the golem, Mendel. 
The golem's life cometh from truth. Thou speakest riddles. The word truth hath been writ upon a scroll and placed within the brow of the creature. The Hebrew word for truth and the word for death are but a single letter apart. Destroy that one letter and the creature falls in death. This is the cabalistic magic that quickened the golem. The demon is no more. The golem was no demon. It was, and we have sent it straight to hell. The golem was animated by the life force, and his spirit now returns to Abraham's bosom. What? Blaspheming sorcerer? This monster of clay has no soul. I am no sorcerer. I am a cabalist, and all life is from God. Every man, animal, and creature, even this golem, even vampires such as thee. Liar! Thou dost toy with my sanity! One such as I cannot be redeemed. I am an outcast from heaven. Not so. All life comes from one place, and to that place it must return. Why should God make such creatures? To vex mankind. They're all part of the kingdom of God sent to test our faith, as the devil did test the simple faith of Job. How has thy faith endured, Crusader? Not well, for God hath abandoned my soul. The question is not whether God hath abandoned thee, selfish boy. It's whether thou wilt abandon God and become a beast. I shall consider thy words. Nay, there is no magic in the Shem. It is merely letters. Letters which connect the golem to the true source of power. Nonetheless, the Cappadocians would be grateful to get such a thing. It would help them build golems for their own protection. The Shem is thine, with my blessings to do with as thou pleaseth. Hail Garanol of Clan Cappadocian, master of the art of death. Hail to thee, servant of the wise Ekaterina of Clan Brugia. Be most welcome. And hail to thee, good Christoph who vanquished the fiend in the mines. I make no claim of vengeance against thee for the destruction of my haven. Instead, I offer my thanks to thee and to thy clan for bringing to light the treachery of my venomous child Mercurio. I present this to thee as a gift from Ekaterina the Wise, sire of the Brugia. Ah, yes. This should be of some use, some use indeed, to protect us from the disorder of these times. Tell your mistress I am grateful, and owe the noble Bruja a boon. We shall. I only wish this Shem had not been purchased at so dear a price. I mourn the bloodshed in the Jewish quarter by the wicked Mercurio, and do reproach myself for his misdeeds. The good rabbi now journeys into the land of the dead, where hides all knowledge, and I am to blame. Prithee tell Ekaterina that I wish to serve her Promethean task and strive with her to bind up our uncertain future. In partial payment of the boon I owe, I offer thee my prized child, Serena. She will aid thee in thy efforts. I pray that my service will be of value to thee. I understand thy sorrow, Kristoff. When Garanal embraced me, I was forced to leave behind all I loved in the mortal world. The loss of it still weighs upon my heart and drags me to despair. I offer thee any comfort I may give in thy grief. I thank thee that I do not surrender my hope of reunion with Ineska, even though I am beyond all hope. Then thy Ineska is fortunate indeed, though such barren hope might breed only more sorrow.
I am not surprised the little nun is missing. She is reckless. Dost thou know of her? No. Yes. We shall lie to thee no longer. Anezka came hither in search of thee. The gift of sight blazed in her eyes, revealing unto her that we are children of Cain. And yet she had no fear of us. Where is she? We told her thou wert not among us, and she left. What? She insisted on leaving this letter for thee, as if she somehow knew we had lied to her. I give it thee. Dearest Kristoff, I have not seen thee since the night thou fled the convent, and I fear thou hast been swallowed by the creatures that rule the night. But dread shall not rule my heart. I am resolved to renounce my holy orders and walk the face of the earth until I unite with thee. And if thou turneth thy face from me, I shall search for such panacea as will restore thy soul and bring the rose to thy fair cheek again. Thou hath captured my heart, and I can do naught but seek thee and make us both whole. Though our cause be lost, yet shall we both be found. Thy immortal love, Anezka. Why didst thou not tell me? Welp, thou must leave her world behind. Thou hast doomed her. I could have persuaded her to stay in the safety of the convent. Nay. Thou canst not control such as she. There was a mania that shone in her eye, a kind of madness. And yet her mind was sharp, as if her delirium had strengthened her mind rather than sapped it. In another time, I would have been moved to take such a one as my child. Nay, her soul must remain pure. We must find her and save her from the fiends. We must redeem her before my curse dooms her. As in my dream. The nun was not the only one missing. Many have been taken, mortal and vampire alike. We go in search of our Bruja allies, but we'll rescue as many of the others as we can, including thy mortal nun. Therefore we are resolved to entreat Prince Rudolf Brandel for assistance, even though he is of Clan Ventru. To make amends for withholding this letter from thee, we go tonight. Come. We know of these disappearances. Little happens in Prague without our knowledge. How now? Hast thou discovered the culprit? We can direct thee aright. Should we feel so moved? I cannot imagine such a thing as can move thy lordship. We desire a reliquary containing the arm of St. George, which lieth in the antechamber of the Cathedral of St. Vitus. Alas, a ring of hallowed ground outside the cathedral doth repel canines. The sanctified ground extends not into the cathedral, but we cannot cross the outer gates. Then how may we cross the sanctified ring to enter the cathedral? We tire of the... Pray, do not return until thou hast the arm. Very well, we go. Nay, to withhold such knowledge is wicked. We seek to save many. Has the prince no pity, no humanity, that he only bestows his knowledge for a price? I warn thee, stripling. We have staked fledgling for a hundred years as punishment for little else than speaking in our presence. We allowed thy mistress to make thee, and we can unmake thee with a word. Pray forgive him. Christoph knows not. Silence. Because yon child Christoph did show bravery in the silver mines and may yet be useful to us, he shall yet retain his freedom, but only if he henceforth silences his impertinent Bruja tongue. Salutations from Ekaterina the Wise. Wise? Not wise enough to protect the mortals from canine treachery. And neither was I. It has now been set right by the courage of the Promethean Bruja. Has it? 
Another quarter of Prague is now defenseless before the fiends who steal innocence in the night. Sons of Cain and sons of Abel alike are missing. But I am pleased thou hast stopped the golem. Send my greetings to thy mistress. Where do these many passages lead? Everywhere. Everywhere mortals live in Prague. There are secret entrances to even the most impregnable fortresses of the mortals. Most useful. Enter them not, stripling. Trespass, and I will peel thy pretty, unscarred face and wear it as a fair and tender mask. My tunnels are only for Nosferatu. Or those who pay the price. What price? Bring me a goblet of sweet blood from an elder canite of beautiful visage. Or venture not within my lair. Joseph, do thy hidden tunnels allow vampires to enter the cathedral? Aye. My tunnels undermine the sanctified ring of protection. I have used the tunnels to enter the cathedral many times and gorged myself upon the intoxicating Christian blood within. Then I shall bring thee the blood of a beautiful canine elder and enter thy tunnels. We crave a goblet of thy precious blood that we may enter the Nosferatu tunnels to pass into the cathedral. I do give thee a goblet of my blood, brave Kristoff. May the arm of a saint arm us with absent f Oh, yes. It is lovely. Most lovely. Thou mayest enter my halls. Go thou. However, I cannot guarantee a safe journey. In the beginning, there was only Cain. Cain, who sacrificed his brother out of love. Cain, who was cast out. Cain, who was cursed with the lust for blood. It is Cain from whom we all come. Our sire's sire. For the passing of an age, Cain lived in the land of Nod, in loneliness and suffering. For an eon, he remained alone. But the passing of memory drowned his sorrow, and so he returned to the world of mortals. To the world of mortals. To the world his brother and his brother's children had created. Though he became ruler of a mighty nation, Cain was still alone, for none was as he. His sorrow grew once again. Then he committed another great sin, for he begat progeny, of whom there were only three. But from them came more progeny, Cain's grandchildren. And then Cain said, an end to this crime. There shall be no more. And as Cain's word was law, his brood obeyed him. The city stood for many ages and became the center of a mighty empire. But then came the deluge a great flood that washed over the world. The city was destroyed, and its people along with it. Again, Cain fell into a great sorrow and went into solitude, becoming as a dog amidst the wastes, and leaving his progeny to their own ends. They came to him and begged him to return, to help them rebuild the city but he would not come with them, saying the flood had been sent as punishment for his having returned to the world of life and subverting the true law.
a great war was waged. The elders against their children. And the children slew their parents. The rebels then built a new city and brought to it 13 tribes. It was a beautiful city, and its people worshipped them as gods. They created new progeny of their own, the fourth generation of Canaanites. But they feared the Jihad, and it was forbidden for those children to create others of their kind. Although this city was as great as Cain's, eventually it grew old. As do all living things, it slowly began to die. Their city was destroyed and their power extinguished. With their authority gone, all were free to create their own broods. And soon there were many new Cainites who ruled across the face of the earth. Who is he disturbing the repose of the dead? One who prizes the living over the dead. Thou hast entered the halls of King Vakhav the First. Thy canine flesh must be unraveled from thy canine bones that thou may enter the halls of the dead, naked of all of thy canine spirits. To die before the grave. Behold, Christoph, there are worse fates than that, and worse than unlife is a vampire. Thou spoke true. Behold the reliquary with the arm of St. George. I pray thee, tell us of those that are missing. Yes, thou hast done well. We shall tell thee a tale to curdle thy blood. Thy absent friends and vanished allies now dwell in Vienna at the chantry of the damnable clan Tremere. They abduct mortals and turn them into ghouls that they may have foot soldiers in their bloody war against the Zemitsi. But now the Tremere have undertaken to abduct their fellow vampires in violation of all Cainite law. They conjoin the flesh of many vampires to create demonic gargoyles to fight the Zemitsi. Such are the ways of those that did once plunder the power of Cain by committing an unspeakable act upon a grandchild of Cain. Where have they taken the slaves? We know not. But our spies have ferreted out their slave master. His name is Arden, and he dwelleth in a secret Tremere chantry hidden within an alchemist shop in Golden Lane. We seek thy princely permission to attack him and liberate such slaves as he has taken. Such dispensation I do not give lightly, for we of Clan Ventrum have lately joined in an alliance with the Tremere. We do use the Tremere for our own ends against the hated Zemitsi clan. Yet for their crimes against my city, the Tremere must pay a debt of blood. We do bestow our princely dispensation upon thee. Thou mayst assault Arden's chantry and liberate such Cainite slaves as he has taken. liberate mortal slaves as well, or does the prince care not for those whose blood sustains us? I see that Ekaterina the Wise has not yet tamed the impertinent tongue of this child. I shall assist her in the chore. <coughs> now that thou hast paid the price, I give thee full dispensation to liberate such mortals as thou findeth within Arden's chantry. Now get thee from my sight. This shop is but a mask, concealing the face of the Tremere in their lair. What wonders are these? Tis as if the Tree of Knowledge and the Tree of Life have rooted in this terrible place. These are magic trees. The Tremere revel in their thaumaturgical power to reshape the world to their purposes. I fire! Ah! Need spell. <laughs> Shipping manifest for the October slave shipment to be shipped 
seven mortal slaves and three canine prisoners. The Ventru caravan master Count Orsi shall ship the slaves to the house de Hexi in Vienna. We have found prisoners. Thou art free of thy bondage by the power of the Prometheans. Thanks upon thanks to thee for releasing us. Ye have saved us surely. Blessings upon ye, stranger. Hold. What manner of canine have they imprisoned here? He seems more animal than man. Thou hast saved Eric of Clan Gangrel. According to the ancient canine law, I owe thee a life boon. I shall accompany thee and protect thee until such time as I discharge my debt. Thou speaks with honor. Thy providential attack did interrupt the wicked sorcerer Arda as he began a conjuration to twist me into a mindless gargoyle. At the sound of thy coming, the Tremere snake slithered into the chambers below. I am thine to command. After I have felt the Tremere's shriveled heart burst between my jaws. Thou mayst tear the warlock's heart from his chest only after I have pried truthful answers from his mouth. Now let us go. Do not attack me! I shall give thee all thy desires. Hold, Ardan. I am Christoph Romuald of Clan Bruja. Where is Aneska? Welcome, Christoph Romuald. Ah, yes. An intriguing woman came unto me. A nun she was. And she was my first nun. Uh, that is, she was the first nun who ever came seeking me. Aneska, her name. She sought the lore of the kindred. She sought our secrets. And she sought to learn of thee, Christophe. I was intrigued with such audacity. Come to the point, Magus. She seemed to have no fear. No fear at all. I was dumbstruck. She seemed possessed of the courage of a hundred warriors, yet I could smell her fear. Well aware she was of the risk she ran. Was she filled with arrogant self-righteousness? No. She knew her god would not protect her from my hunger. Did she seek martyrdom? No. She clearly clung to her life and lived life with a passion I had not seen before in a nun. Was she mad or a mere fool? No. Behind her quiet words, there lurked a cunning mind. She was, she was, I did not know what she was. And in not knowing, I was intrigued, intrigued and strangely drawn to her. I care not for thy loathsome appetites, Ardan. What became of her? And she was quite beautiful. Didst thou know? Couldst thou see that behind her wimple, that her hair was long and auburn? Couldst thou see that beneath the shapeless folds of her robe, that she possessed a body as achingly beautiful as any odalisque? Truly, she chose the wrong profession to make the best use of the gifts God had bestowed upon her. In defiance of heaven, she had buried her talents in the field of the holy orders. Her beauty transfixed me, just as her courage thrilled me. I had never met a woman like her, and I shall never again. I had to have her. I had to make her my own child. If thou dare to defile her in such a way, I swear, I will burn thee to ash an inch at a time. Thou might show more charity to the only one who can find her. He baits thee, Christoph, and dawdles for some treacherous purpose. Pray, let me kill him! Ardan, if thou dost fail to tell me where she is with thy next breath, Eric will behead thee before thou draw breath again. I know not. I touched her not, but merely sent her away to the Tsumitsi. Dost thou take me for a fool? Why wouldst thou send one thou lusted for to thy hated enemy? My sire would not allow me another child, and I dared not defy him. 
but I could not bear the thought of another embracing her. So I sent her to the Tzimitzi. They are the only clan that would have no use for one such as she, so I could be sure they would not embrace her. They would simply kill her, thinking her a part of some Tremir scheme. Devil-tongued fiend! Thou hast sent her to her death! Die! Wait! She did return from the Tzimitzi! What? Liar! The Tzimitzi would have killed her. Peace. Let him speak. I asked her how she survived, and she said, Her faith sustains her in all things. She even thanked me for sending her to the Tzimitzi. Ah, a most remarkable woman. My spies did tell of a premise revenant that did cower before the pure light of her faith, and sobbing like a child, whispered to her of Golconda. Golconda? What is that? The belief that a vampire can be redeemed, cured of the blood of Cain. He's but a legend, and no more. Told to give comfort to weak-willed Canaanites. Yet no one knows more of Golconda than the great Tremere master, Atreus. She said she would go to him in his chantry in Vienna. She even asked to ride to Vienna in our October caravan of slaves. What a woman! Where is she? Tell me or I will split thee in twain. I delivered her to the Ventru caravan driver, Orsi, and they left three days ago for Vienna. Doc, thou hast enslaved her. Ha! Master Atreus will take great delight in her. And now I have finished casting this spell that will destroy thee, thou love-struck clotpole! Ah! Are done. I will slay thee if it is my last act on Earth! Come, we return to the university in triumph. Very well. But then I shall go to Vienna and reclaim fair Anesca from these cursed warlocks. I must take my leave of this city. I am sure the Tremere hold Anesca in their Vienna Chantry. I can no longer continue here while she remains in danger. Ardan was a consummate deceiver. The Tremere have gathered fearsome power in Vienna, and we are not ready for bloody battle with the usurpers. They invited thee to play a sinister game. They know that one day we will have to attack their Vienna Chantry, and so they desire to force our hand before we are ready. I shall not be tricked. Only after we have gathered the other clans in alliance may we contemplate a strike against them. We will not venture into so palpable a trap. But Anesca will die. Many have died in the Elder Wars, and many more will die ere Gehenna comes. But fewer will die if we bide our time and heed not the trickery of the Tremere. But I cannot simply abandon Anesca to those fiends? Thou canst and thou must. Thy claim upon her is born in weak need, mortal sentiment. Release such frailties, and spare thyself further wretchedness. We cut our ties to mortals when first we received the blessing of Allfather Cain. Thou hast been reborn in blood, cleansed of mortal claims. Thou art exalted. Thou art immortal. Thou art finally free! I thought we Prometheans respect the mortals. For a bumpkin of a holy warrior, thou dost reason like a Greek sage. Aye, we respect mortal men, but we do not seek kinship with the current breed. For lo these many generations, mortals have been cowed by the cleverness of the Inkanu, their faculties are thrown by scheming mages, and their wisdom tainted by demons. The little nobility left in them is tainted by corrupt rulers and priests. The mortals of Carthage were worthy companions. Their base progeny are not worth the spilling of the blood of immortals. Anesca is as noble a woman as any in Carthage. We must rescue her. 
brazen brat. Thou hast earned no such right. Even faithful Wilhelm would quake in fear before making such a selfish request. Perhaps, but I make it all the same. Mayhap, in a generation or two, thou shalt be deemed worthy of making such a request. In a generation or two, she will die an old woman, even if she survives the Zemitsi. Then let her die! She chose her path, not thee! She chose to enter the world of vampires. Thou canst not save the foolhardy from their own reckless ways. Remember, like Cain, we are not our brother's keepers. I dragged her down in this vile pit, and I will draw her back again. I forbid it! Tread lightly, lest thou arouse my anger and provoke my powers upon thee. Do as thou must, but I must rescue her. I know not the fate of my soul, only the state of my heart. Very well. I see thy heart is fixed upon this course, and thou wilt not be denied. Go if thou wilt. Shouldst thou survive the Tremere trap, remember well this freedom I have bestowed upon thee. But I shall not attend this fool's errand. Only a Malkavian would follow thee. Then call me a moon-mad child of Malkav, for I shall go. Willem, thou art true a friend as any in God's kingdom. A true fool. Mayhap I shall yet see this god of whom thou art overmuch fond. Or mayhap we shall tear the foul halls of the Tremere down around their scabrous ears bring the black heart of their sire to a Katarina to wear as a charm. Wilhelm, thou art mad! Two Canites cannot survive the house to Hexi. Not two, three shall go. Though I have no wish to see the inside of another Tremere Chantry, I shall discharge my life boon by accompanying the brave Bruja, who pried open in the jaws of the Tremere trap and released poor Eric. Where Kristoff goes, Serena goes. Mayhap four shall prevail where one cannot. Mayhap I shall have to replace four Prometheans. Come, we leave for Vienna. This means traveling through the Bohemian forest. It is beset with werewolves, mortal enemies of our kind. Few canites survive the road. There will be no trouble with the moon beasts while I am here. My clan has made peace with these creatures. We will have safe passage through the forest. Very well. Let us leave by the east gate. Here I went and in the weapon shop of Friedrich von Svetter. There are no finer weapons in all Vienna than are here in. We seek mended armor. Thou hast an impoverished look and the demeanor of outlanders. Hast thou coin to pay? If such uncharitable suspicion is the custom of the land, I am glad to be an outlander. We are merely weary and dusty from the road. We can pay our way. We can pay in gold or in blood. The choice is thine, Von Sweeter. Uh, yes. How may I be of service? Another Tremere. Nay, he is mortal. I can smell it. Aye, not Tremere, but a mortal mage of the Order that splintered into the Tremere. He may be useful. Hail to thee, mage. I am Christoph of Clan Bruja. Hail to thee. I am Orvis, mage of the Hermetic Order. We are looking for a Ventru named Orsi. Canst thou tell us where we may find him? Come to his mansion in the Western Wingstrasse. Tonight there is a feast in honor of the new solstice. 
Here's an invitation on the finest virgin skin parchment. I like not this talk of the skin of virgins. <laughs> to my many, many, many dear, dear, dear friends, I would be honored beyond all telling should thou see fit to grace my exquisite mansion in the Western Wingstrasse with the most splendid presence. We shall celebrate the upcoming solstice and the splendor of trade and foreign lands that have so enriched Vienna. Come, sample the finest drink in the land. I have the reddest of reds <laughs> and the sweetest of nectars for thy refined palates. Or oh, see the magnificent. This must be the house of Count Orsi, the slave master. All the fops, bootlicks, and toadies in Vienna are here assembled. Knights, I see thou hast met my children. This is Kazi, Teta, and Zil, the most beautiful daughters of Cain thou shalt ever meet. <laughs> Unfortunately, Teta and Zil lost the ability to speak during their <laughs> mortal lives. I found them in servitude to a rather harsh master that saw to it to remove their tongues. <laughs> he was dealt with in a fitting fashion, eh, say my darlings? <laughs> Don't worry. Kazi is happy to speak for the three of them now. We come seeking Bruja taken as slaves from Prague, a mortal woman among them. Slaves? Oh, yes. The slave business has been so very delicious. Duke Leopold needed a force to beat back the Semitze, and the Lord, the Tremere appeared as if by divine providence. <laughs> The Tremere and Semitze battle each other with surpassing fury. And I, humble Ventru that I am, I profit from the selling of slaves to both clans. <laughs> the Duke and I shall ensure that the Tremere win the war. But only after I have collected much treasure from the carnage, then shall we destroy the wounded Tremir, as punishment for the blasphemy they committed upon the antediluvian salute. Tell us of the October shipment from Prague. <laughs> Does thou think me a fool? that I will give away that which thou wilt purchase. <laughs> Presumptuous bumpkin, shouldst thou wish to know of thy allies, thou shalt perform a mission for me. <laughs> Very well. Excellent. I see we two are a kin, zealot. Come, come to my study where we may discuss this further. Mayhap thou shalt find some delicious morsels to refresh thee. Mm. Pray, sup with me. I trust that thou wilt find these orders to thy liking. If they are not pleasing to the taste, we shall have them flogged. <laughs> <laughs> State thy business, Orsi. Well, I can see thou hast no courtly manners in the bumpkin. 
Listen well. The Tremere have clapped their slaves away in the Tremere Chantry, Die Haus der Hexe, the most protected heaven in Vienna. So do not think to try to kill me to gain them. They are quite beyond my power. Only Duke Leopold could convince the Tremere to give up their slaves. The Duke is responsible for allowing the Tremere to lodge in Vienna. So the Tremere do his bidding. Assist my ally, the Duke, and he will owe thee a boon. Hm? What does the Duke wish? The end to the reign of the pestilential vampire priest Luther Black. Years ago, Luther was but a mortal priest of Stephenston Church. A wayward La Sombra sought to rule Vienna by controlling the church and dared to embrace Luther. We sent the sire to hell, <laughs> but Luther locked himself away from the outside world. He hath retained a pitiable hold on the faith he had in life and sleeps by day upon a cross of pure silver. <laughs> Quite uncomfortable, I assume, but he fancies himself a martyr. The Duke has been unable to remove this blasphemous member of the Shadow Clan since Luther is ensconced within a ring of holy ground. Then how do we find him? Better to ask how to bind him. <laughs> Thou cannot destroy him. The priest has strange powers beyond thy ken. But thou can restrain him. <laughs> Here are chains even Luther Black cannot break. I am a master of metalwork, and I have forged these shackles from a new, unbreakable alloy. Thou mayst find them useful and more reliable than the <laughs> magics in thy blood. Destroy Luther Black and the Duke will retrieve thy slaves. Hmm. Mm, not to my liking, I'm afraid. I prefer blood of a nobler sort. It is my only vice. <laughs> Enough of this dainty preening and strutting. How do we reach the La Sombra? Refinement is wasted on lumbering brutes such as thee. There will come a time when boorish churls are put in their place. <laughs> Thou shalt find a concealed entrance to the church. Behind our famous astrological clock in the inner strat is a hidden passage. Enter by night and wait inside for daylight, and thou may steal into the inner haven undetected. <laughs> we shall undertake thy mission. Good. Now get the hence. <laughs> so. Christoph has not yet perished at the hands of the vampire priest. <laughs> the deadly nature of thy mission inflames my sister Tata, and my sister Zil entreats me tell thee that she too is filled with lust for thee. She cannot resist the charms of an immortal so close to death's door. <laughs> Ugh. 
shadows darker than night linger here. Even within the depths of such an evil place, there is a heart of beauty. The La Sombra obsess over portraiture, since they can no longer cast reflections into mirrors. Tis a mysterious quirk of Cain's blood. Thy gold uh. are mine. Why would Luther Black glorify the expulsion of Cain from the Garden? Perhaps it reminds him of his own exile from humanity. Whom seek thee? The Lysambra Luther Black. I am he. So, thou hast come to kill me. I Come then. Kill me if thou can. I await the sacrament of thy blade, and the chains of Orsi the betrayer. Then wait no longer. Aye, tis rude to keep a churchman waiting. Hold. I do not seek thy death, Luther. I only wish the return of those innocents taken by the Tremere. I care not for thy wishes, whelp. Attempt thy deed, or be gone. Thou hast done nothing deserving of death. Christoph! Do not play with thy food. It is unseen. Why dost thou seek death so ardently? The cup which my father hath given me. Shall I not drink it? Blasphemy. The Lord hath not commanded thy death. Thou merely seek release from the bitterness of thy unlife. For God's sake, Kristoff. Kill him. He wants to die. I see that thou art like unto me, Kristoff. Thou, too, seek holy refuge from bitter unlife. Once I sought that selfish goal. Now I wish only to save she whom I have imperiled. Then thou art truly the one for whom I have prayed. If thou would redeem, redeem me. I shall not kill thee. Please, I beg of thee. I cannot enter heaven if I turn my hand against myself. But thou, thou hast it in thy power to deliver me. It would be an act of holiness. If I take up thy burden, thou wouldst remain blameless, and thy sin would be mine alone to bear. Thy elevation would be my damnation. Nay, I, tis so. I, tis so. Wilt thou do this for me all the same? It is more than I may ask of thee, yet I ask it still. Wilt thou take my sins upon thee? Very well then, we shall bind thee. Bind me with Orsi's chain, that I cannot escape the sun in my frenzy. Salvation at last. Thou hast serviced me well. I am in thy debt. Alas. I did not become the greatest merchant in Vienna by paying my debts. <laughs> Such expenses unbalance my tidy ledger books. Besides, I should like to deliver the news of the La Sombre's death to the Duke myself. Take them away. At least tell me if the Tremere have harmed Ineska. <laughs> That's thy only concern, as thou art being taken as a slave? The health of some other slave? Thou must develop thy self-interest if thou wish to survive the ordeal. <laughs> Tell me if Aneska has been harmed. Oh, who can keep track of such things? 
when the silver poureth in like water, I have not the time to track every slave. <laughs> if Ineska has been harmed, I will destroy thee in the most painful manner possible, even if it takes a thousand years. Thou art impertinent for a slave. We shall see how a few weeks of starvation calms thy hot blood. <laughs> thou hast heard my oath, thou depraved peddler of living flesh. Well, I have spent too much time with thee. Cannot shut out of this cage! Seems impenetrable. No! I will not go back to a Tremir dungeon! Then lend me a bit of thy blood. I have a plan, but need all my strength to make it happen. Take all thou needs. to settle with those Teutonic Knights. They reflect badly on my homeland, and I must smite them before the locals think we are all ignoble knaves. Freedom is sweet, and their blood shall be the sweeter. The slaves are free! Capture them! Do not let them escape! Why escape, when we can stay and feast on thy soft, warm blood? Hold! Hold! Villain! Villain! Ah! Villain! There are Tremere here allied with the Teutonic Knights towards some fell purpose. Maps! They show strikes against the Zumitsi throughout the forest and nearby lands. This fortress appears to be the seat of the Ventru and Tremere alliance against the Fiends. We must tell this to Ekaterina. What do these strange omens portend? What dost thou know of the House de Hexi? Only that the Magi within were once part of our order, but have of late been up to doings unknown, allowing none entry to their fortress. The Order would be grateful for anything that thou may learn of them, or do to them. We cannot enter the fortress either. Thou needs must have the amulet of Etrius. Amulet? We found this amulet with the Tremere. This is the very thing. It it needs must be filled with magic to work. I will enchant it if thou promise to return with the journal of Atreus. Why seek you this journal, Orvis? We seek to cleanse our hermetic order of the taint of the Tremere. And we must learn more about the frightening loss of magic in the world that began at the turn of the millennium. Magic fades from the world, and we know not how to stop the inexorable ebb of the magical tides. The Tremere have learned some of these secrets, but will not share them. If we find such a journal, we shall give it thee. Then I shall enchant thy amulet of Etrius. Go quickly. The Tremere are invading Zemitsi territory this night to launch open warfare, leaving their chantry largely unguarded. I wish thee luck. I thank thee, Orvis. Now let us split asunder Das House de Hexi. the slaves. Where is Aneska? Hold! How didst thou enter? 
Intruders in our sanctum. Bring them down. How dare any enter the church? Ah! <laughs> oh. Where are the slaves? Where is Ineska? Tell me, and thou shalt not be harmed. Meddling cost among us! Thou cannot comprehend the forces thou hast interrupted. And for that small mercy we give thanks. I shall destroy thee, and seek out thy progeny for torture and thy allies for enslavement. One thing at a time, first done. Thou hast yet to deal with us. <laughs> of the gods is with thee, for on any other night the full force of Tremere would have dissolved thee into slop. Flee this place now, for thy death shall be as vile as thine offenses. Where are the slaves? Where is Aneska? Fools! I have no time for thee! I must return to the war against the vile Samitsi! Dost thou not understand my charity in allowing thee to flee with thy miserable hides intact? Go, now! Give us the slaves. Or look to protect thine own hide. What? <laughs> thy temerity is exceeded only by thy folly. Etrius is beyond thy harm. He is not. But prithee wait, for Eric can ensure that Etrius is forever beyond all harm. I shall remember thy insolence, ancient Gengra. There is no need for further bloodshed. I wish thy Bruja slaves and the mortal woman Inesco from the October caravan, and we shall leave this house in peace. And if I give them none, then I shall pop thy body plate between me teeth like an overripe melon! I warn thee, Gangrel. Thou hast nearly completed the cycle of transformation in Arden's Chantry. Now I finish his work. Behold the power of the Tremere! I rise. Ow! my friend. Thy wrongful death will be avenged. Thou hast killed the Gangrel? Is this how Christmas reveals his fate? Now, I will sheathe my fangs in thy disloyal neck. Well... <laughs> 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 thee, boy! I have suffered the loss of precious magic in my world. I have suffered the willing loss of my soul to retain some spark of enchantment in a world turned to dross. I have suffered the maddening serenity of the dying salute. But I will not suffer further indignity at the hands of a fledgling Bruja and his ragtag brigade. Hear me, Promethean! Thy precious Aneska is not here. The October caravan from that idiot Orsi never reached the house Dahexi. The hated Samitsi laid a trap near Prague. 
they took the caravan and all therein. The Zamitsi are the real foe in this world. Even as thou waste my time, the fiends plot to burn the world down around us all. Now go! And disturb us no further! I have wanted no part of any of the schemes of the undead. Yet I have risked myself in all of them. And has it brought me one step closer to Ineska? Has it gained me a jot more humanity? I cannot answer thee. Oh, Kristoff, my heart aches for thee. We give thanks to thee. To show our gratitude, we give thee an enchantment that will help thee deflect flame. The journal of Etria should prove helpful in cleansing our order of this vile infiltration. And thy gift should prove helpful in the fiery future we all face. What madness is this? The battle has begun. The city is under siege by vampires and mortals alike. Prince Rudolph is slain. The Zemitsi within Visserod Castle have been revealed to the townspeople, who even now mount a witch-burning campaign against them and all kindred. The castle will not stand. We have won! Aneska may be prisoner of the Zemitsi. We must fly to Visserod Castle. Thou hast grown strong, child. Thou hast learned to harness the gifts I have bequeathed thee. But this evil is far greater than any thou hast known. Visserod is a tomb. I forbid a venture there, and all who enter will surely die. I am already dead thanks to thee, or didst thou forget? Now I go. Wait, Kristoff, I join thee. Sorry, Ekaterina. I cannot abandon him now. Poor fool, Wilhelm. I thought thou wouldst teach Kristoff. Now I see thou art the pupil, and Kristoff the teacher. Mayhap his futile quest shall lead thee to thy demise. Good people of Throg! For too many years we have trembled in the shadow of this hell-hated mountain. Let us wage bloody war upon these fiends. I pray that our righteous fires burn this wicked castle to the roots and cleanse the land of all evildoers! <laughs> Esteemed and mighty Voyevod Vukadak, Gird of the Carpathians, Smiter of lesser clans, Slayer of Lupines, all here assembled do profess great esteem for the cruel and terrible proficiency with which thou dost dispatch the affairs of thy Carpathian holdings. In respect and honor, thou art commanded to present thyself to the Council of Voyevodes one fortnight hence, at the time of the full moon, to answer for certain acts whose influence doth precurse fierce events which augur doom to all Zenitsi. Voyevod Erdo, Viceroy, Council of Voyevodes, Master of the Hellhounds, Sculptor of the Flesh of Thousands. Where is she? Where is Inezka? It is Kristoff. Kill him! Kristoff, the murderer of Azra! Kristoff, the butcher of countless primacies! Kristoff, ravager of the impenetrable Tremere fortress! I am Trishik Lee! Fools! He's only a fledgling! Kill him! Come, fools! Thy final death awaits! Exalted Council of Voyevodes, Lords of Clan Simitsi, most grave charges put to Voyevod Vukadak, scourge of the Carpathians. Thou art called to answer. Hast thou, Voyevod Vukadak, issued the blasphemous decree that thou art performing conjurations crafted to usurp the mantle of our grandsires? Proclamation of Voivod Erdo, Viceroy, Council of Voivods, Master of the Hellhounds, Sculptor of the Flesh of Thousands. Be it known to all Voivods that Voivod Vukodak, Scourge of the Carpathians, 
but refused our most solemn and lawful petition to cease his mad scheme, even in the face of the opposition of the Council. The Voyevodes cannot approve the waxing visibility of his acts, for in proclaiming his mad ambition to grow in stature to rival the ancient Canites, he hath drawn much unwanted attention from the other clans and other powerful and jealous forces who even now meddle in our affairs. Therefore, it is my grave duty to propose that the Council attack the wayward Voyevode, destroy him utterly, and seize his extensive holdings for dispersal among the remaining Voyevodes in payment for our great exertions in disposing of him. I await ratification by Council. Voyevode Ardo. From the annals of Voyevode Ardo, Viceroy, Council of Voyevodes, Master of the Hellhound, Sculptor of the Flesh of Thousands, Revenger of Wayward Voyevodes. Let it be known to all present that the Council of Voyevodes have issued the following decree unto all Lords of the Genitsi. Voyevod Vukodlak have committed acts of grave offense against clan elders, who here gather to address the misdeeds of the renegade ruler. Vukodlak hath refused to cease his mad scheme, even in the face of the indignant opposition of the Council. Thus it is agreed by all here assembled that his domain shall be stripped and divided among the remaining Voyevods. Yet, with deference to those Voyevodes who correctly point out the considerable risks of outright warfare, the Council shall fight Bukadlak with a mighty conjuration that shall plunge the disloyal Voyevode into a grievous torpor that shall last twenty centuries. Perhaps, in that time, he shall learn humility. Thus, he hath seen his own fate. Well ratified by our law and heraldry. To the master who holdeth my soul, I still feel thy pull across the depths to your realm of sleep, and thus am ever faithful. Such of the children, revenants, and ghouls as survive the raid of the Council of Voivods have kept thy slumbering form safe until such time as we can call thee forth. Until then, I shall keep accurate account of thy affairs in the waking world. Yibusa, the Defiled. To the master who holdeth my soul, we miserable exiles have known only the road and brief shelter among the frightened mortals of the Carpe. There is no safety for us here. We must reach Bohemia in the newly established township called Brock. We may at long last have ranged beyond the reach of the hated council. And then we may begin the measureless task of breaking the vile sorcery that locks thy lofty presence away from us. Then let the world shudder at thy resurrection. Lebusa, the Defiler. To the master who holdeth my soul, Rog hath proved a most hospitable haven. Our work proceeds apace, and thy children to embrace many of the herd to swell our ranks. Though the embraced are perhaps not of the finest stock, as were the children thou didst choose, one must not condemn the teeth of the mare one has stolen. If they have embraced a bumpkin, well, then we have one more pumpkin that may defile innocence and hasten thy dread resurrection. Whereupon the world will quake in dread, and mortal, voivod, and antediluvian alike shall fall naked and helpless before thy wrath. 
Libusa, the Defiant. To the master who holdeth my soul, what offense have I committed, O dread lord, that thou wouldst raise up to my station a newcomer? Dost thou disdain my growing lunacy? Tis but a momentary midday madness that strikes when thy commands ebb. Yet my faculties return with the shades of night. What charms hath this novice that she should rival my station within thy dark domain? Her defilement is not even complete. Any trust in her is misplaced. I trust her not, and would end her life ere she causes some mischief. Libusa, the defile. Beast emerges from the darkest corners of my heart. Anezka, I sought thee for love. So predictable, so pathetically predictable. Like all oafish mortal men, thou come a-trotting when a woman beckons. Oh, how thy sinful words offend mine ears! Did not thy carnal lust die with thy mortal flesh? Love, love that is pure, love can release thee. Oh, only the bards and the diseased of mind pay heed to such rot. Oh, fair Anezka, what have they done to thee? All manner of delightful things. I am thoroughly defiled now, and it is all because of thee. Forgive me, Anezka. I never meant harm to come to thee. But thou harmed me all the same. I will enjoy the taste of thy Bruja blood. It is so clean compared to the sweet corruption of Zamitsi blood. Bid the devil greetings from me, for I send thee to hell. And this time is mine now, well, another of my servants that await me in my slumber. Even now she grows strong as my blood forces to revenge. As I rise to meet the night sky of the new millennium, the very antediluvians will shudder in fear. Oh, release me! I shall protect thee from these monsters. I have a ceremony of resurrection to perform. Be gone! Nay! The wolves fall about us! Release me! Never! Nesca! Father Alicia said it's a rock. Then we get over it. Crystals. Survived. Surely the ancient Vukadlok endures still. I don't know anybody named Vukadlok. Thou speaks the language of England, but in a manner most passing strange. Who is thy master mortal? With the society of Leopold. 
I know them not. We slay vampires. <laughs> My name is Christoph Romulord. I was a man of God and a soldier in heaven's cause. I am now outcast of heaven and not even a man. I am kindred. I am a vampire. A metal sling that hurls deadly stones. It is simple to use, yet murderous beyond measure. I see that man has not rested in his quest to create ever more powerful weapons. Where am I? What sorcerer's abode is this? Aneska. Who is that? A vampire! Kill him! Back off, bloodsucker, or I'm sending you to hell! The water of life now burns me! Journal in Tree, August 1999. The Prague excavation is finally on schedule. The kindred resting places have finally yielded up their secrets. We've gotten the crates of Earth to London without trouble and customs. Dr. Alasius is finally pleased with us, after giving us hell for two years. From the journal of Father Leo Alasius, Society of Leopold. Joy! My research has paid off. The fools who laughed at me won't be laughing now. Won't the leaders of the Society of Leopold be chastened to learn that I have uncovered the location of Viserad Castle? Journal entry, October 1999. We've been driven off the dig. Damn Zemitsi. We've lost half our forces. Back to England to regroup. Still, Dr. Alasius is oddly optimistic. He reckons that the ancient vampire we found will be the key to carrying on a holy crusade. I want to douse the undead wretch with petrol and strike a match to it. But the doctor knows best. Look how all the world hath aged. And I have aged too. I feel old and drained and weathered as all these relics. The fall of Viserot Castle from an unknown source. It's Mitzi conspire against not just the other clans, but against the antediluvians and Cain himself and against God in an ultimate battle they dare to hope to win. In their monstrous hubris, they see themselves as the true masters of all kindred and of all ancient power. In the last days after the deluge, the ancient Smitsi Vukudlak gathered demonic power by defiling all that was good and pure. He posed a threat to the ancient order of Canaanites and was cast into deep torpor. But his loyal Smitsi followers conserved his power for centuries and sought to resurrect their dread lord. From the journal of Father Leo Alasius, Society of Leopold. Today, plunged into Viserard Castle with three fire teams of expensive mercenaries, fully expecting to find a hive of Zemitsi cultists. Imagine our surprise when we found the ruins deserted, deserted and utterly intact. This, despite the fact that several of Vukadlak's faithful followers survived the Night of Fire and seek to resurrect their lord, this is proof that God favors me above all others. The Fall of Viserard Castle. Additions to the original by Brother Maynard of the Arcanum. In the 12th century, Vukadlak's cultists nearly succeeded in raising him from torpor. But the Bruja Prometheans led by a Katarina the Wise, crushed his plan and raised Viserard Castle to rubble. The Katarina conspired with the mortals of Prague, who had suffered the depredations of Vukudlok's followers. The mortals aided the Prometheans in the short term, but in the long run, the kindred suffered. The Katarina's act built up mortal opposition to vampires, which would soon culminate in the Inquisition. The Fall of Viserard Castle. Further additions to the original by Father Leo Alasius. Viserard Castle was once the heart of a pitched battle between humans and kindred scum. 
It marks the first time in recorded history that humans have successfully overthrown the bloodsuckers. They were burned, pulled from their havens, and left to bake in the sun. They call it the night the very demons shook the walls of the city, spewing flame and death. Those brave humans are our spiritual forefathers, because they started the Inquisition and burned countless vampires. Of course, there was a lot of collateral damage, but that's unavoidable. Though we call ourselves the Society of Leopold, I prefer the name Inquisition. It strikes fear. What followed was centuries of hiding, which the vampires call the Masquerade. They went underground and tried to build a coalition. Fortunately, they split on policy. Two sects arose, the Camarilla and the Sabbat. The Sabbat sought to regain their domination over the Kine and spurned the masquerade adopted by the Camarilla. I trace this fracture in the vampire world to this event. Therefore, I must uncover the legendary Viserard castle. Who knows what wonders it holds? From the journal of Father Leo Alatius, Society of Leopold, September 1999. Today we begin our excavation of Viserard Castle in earnest. We had better find a lot of valuable artifacts and more. This is costing me a fortune. Some large carved stones are proving very difficult to break through. I can't wait to hold us some damn no. They'll burn like tinder. No! <laughs> From the Journal of Father Leo Athanasius, Society of Leopold, October 1999. Damn! The Zamitsi drove us off by excavation! Killed half my men! We barely got away with the artifacts we uncovered. I cannot believe the Lord allowed this travesty! Friar insists that the large carved stones over the ruins were protective blessings placed after the fall of Visimard Castle by persons unknown. He maintains that the Zemitsi could freely pillage the ruins once we broke through the wards. I dislike his holier-than-thou attitude and don't miss him very much, though he was useful in finding the site of the ruin. From the Journal of Father Leo Alatius, Society of Leopold. God has blessed me with my greatest prize. An ancient vampire still sleeping in deep torpor. He's a blaspheming heretic who wears the red cross of a crusader to mark all that is holy. I'll enjoy tormenting such an evil creature. I've shipped him to my estate where I'll bind him, fatten him on fresh plasma. Then, engorged on his blood, I will hunt down the Zamitsi, who dared to steal artifacts that were rightfully mine. I know little about them, except that they have excavated a tremendous amount of earth from the site and shipped it to London, and from there, I think, to New York, the diabolical home of the Sabbat. They must be setting up a large operation to need so much earth from their homeland. Hello, filthy little kindred. I am Father Leo Alatius, and I have killed bloodsuckers like you for two hundred years. I have no wish to fight thee. Then give up your blood without a fight. It will make a tasty addition to my collection. Early generation kindred, vintage 12th century, 1140. A good decade for Vitae. I wish only to leave this place, but I will kill thee if I must. Your time is dead, boy. You can never fit into this world. You have no one. You are nothing. Let us deliver you from this alien land of eternal loneliness and pain. 
I did not endure for 800 years to die at thy behest. <gasps> ah, yes! You are too old to be To the abyss with thee! From the journal of Father Leo Alatius. Society of Leopold. These damned Zemitsi are proving very hard to find, since they hired the criminal Giovanni to make their shipments untraceable. Still, once the blood of my sleeping vampire courses through my veins, I'll find them and crush the sleeping Vukodlak. Then, with the blood of Vukodlak in my veins, I'll be able to destroy all vampires. Of course, I don't mean all vampires. I'll require a well-maintained flock of imprisoned vampires to keep me supplied with blood. And I'll have to crush all the other vampire slayers lest they destroy my flock. Then I'll have life eternal without succumbing to the curse of Cain. This will take time, but I have all the time in the world. My first 300 years of life will soon seem like nothing more than a prelude to my holy domination of the Earth! Tomorrow we try to feed the vampire without awakening him. Now is all my reason thrown down. Surely my sleep hath made me mad, for if I'm yet sane, then the world has become a lunatic asylum. Towers of glass loom over the tallest cathedral spires. Juggernauts of steel hurtle through the streets of London. The cobbled Roman roads which once I walked as a young crusader are now fused into a single ribbon of black stone. And those roads are clogged with night-walking Londoners, heedless of the danger from the vampires among them. Are they so emboldened by the phantom torches which pierce the night and stab my eyes? Surely my world has died, and all I love lies buried with it. My garments have moldered away with age, as my body would have, were I not one of the damned. I cannot wander the streets clad thus. I have need of suitable garments. Boy, you need a lot more than some new clothes, you freak. You need to hand over your wallet. I know not thy language, but thy intent is clear from the mask that obscures thy eyes. Thou art a common cut purse. What? What's this about a purse? Shut up and give me your money. I shall give thee my blade instead. Yeah! Are you crazy? Ow! Oh, please don't hurt me. Take my gym bag, please. You need clothes, right? I got clothes, you take them. Just don't hurt me. I thank thee for this gift. Go forth and steal no more. Uh, right. Okay, I'm gone. Hail and well met, Keeper of the Curio Shop. I am Christoph. Well, well, well. What have we here? Thy shop displays items of great import. We would examine thy wares. Very well, then. Sumner Montague at your service. Bottoms up. Ah. Eh. Blood's a bit diluted here, eh? What, you fresh out of the grave? Newly embraced? You look it. With that deer in the headlights look pasted on your gob. Do not presume to mock me, whelp. I am far older than thou knowest, and have no patience for the likes of thee. Well, well, well. Oi! Barkeep! Get this antique blood sucker a swig of vitae, courtesy of Pink of Clan Brugia. Don't water it down, you mortal worm. This'll put some color back in your cheeks. Air of the bat that bit you. <laughs> thou art Bruja? Art thou a Promethean? 
You must be a fossil. The Prometheans are ancient history. Those nutters are long dead, along with their utopian ideals. <laughs> what a load of bat shit that was. What's your name, you crusty old relic? Forgive me. I am Christoph Romuald. Oh, Christoph Romuald. Christoph Romuald, once of the Order of the Sword Brethren. Once a Promethean Brugia, and now... Now I know not what. Weary. Alone. And damned. Damned, I can't help. But no one is alone with old Pink around. Especially not a fellow Brugia. But here's to Christoph, the last of the Prometheans. Welcome to the New World, Squire. Hope you like what we've done with the place. So, where will you be creating your Promethean paradise on Earth, Squire? All I wanted was to be with my Ineska. <laughs> A bit of crumpet, eh? I've heard of worse paradises, no mistake. But fair Ineska was taken as ghoul by that Zemitsi monster Vukutlak. After such horrors as I have endured, after losing so much, I awake to find I have finally lost all, for I have lost her. Yeah, not so fast, Squire. There's two ways your bird might be around. Ghouls can live as long as us legs. Of course, you need a constant supply of meatsy blood, or she'll fall apart faster than Thatcher's reforms. And if one of them fiends embraced her, she'd be around today as one of us. Well, as a Zumitsi. Thou dost compound my misery. I dare not hope such a thing. It would be a curse if Farinesca lived in such a state for a thousand years. Take it from old Pink. Anything's better than the quiet of the grave. There's hope even for us licks. We can climb the path to the summit. Or, or some such. Thou art on the road of humanitas? Um, something like that. Thou speakest true. Should Ineska have been preserved for lo these many centuries, I shall seek after her. Whether she is ghoul to that monster, Vukudlak, or one of his vampires, I shall find her. Find her and destroy him. He will pay in angry blood. And if I find only her grave, I shall... I shall be exceedingly glad for her soul. Rare thing, such passion in licks. Bloodless pack of cowards these days. Tell you what, I'll help you find this bird, Aneska. I hate the Zumitsis too. I could enjoy sinking me fangs into a fiend or two. My Lord Pink, thou art honorable. I accept thy kindly offer. You need me to tell you what's what. The camera really have a million little rules. Wipe yourself with the wrong hand, and these licks will call down the Justicars on you. What? Nothing. Just a joke. Thou art unlike the vampires of my world, for most only assisted me for their personal gain. <laughs> well, what's left of us, Brugia, gotta stick together. Even if you are a moldy old fossil. So, where did you last see this bird of yours? I last beheld Anezka before the collapse of the Zemitsi stronghold in Prague. I have since learned that the Zemitsi have traveled from thence to London, and by sea to a land west of London called New York. Perhaps this New York lies within Ireland. <laughs> no, ever since the famine, Ireland lies within New York! <laughs> there are isles west of Ireland? <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. Little place called America. The United States thereof. United States, an auspicious name, for I wish my own state reunited. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Perhaps in New York shall we find a criminal named Giovanni. Giovanni? They ain't one guy. They're a whole clan. A whole clan of criminals. They snacked on old Cappadocius and sucked down all his juice. The entire Cappadocian clan is gone. And the Giovanni have their power. Hmm. I'm not surprised. 
The Cappadocian clan seemed oddly gullible and ripe for domination by schemers even in my day. What became of the Brugia? <laughs> what hasn't? The Brugia are all kissed and made up with the Ventru now, in one big happy family called the Camarilla. The Toreador, the Gangrel, the Nosferatu, the Looney Malkavians, even the Tremere are bosom buddies. Out of fear of Gehenna, mostly. Our real enemy is the Sabbat, made up of the Sumitsi, the Vasambra, and a pack of the most vicious licks in the world. I don't care for the snobs of the Camarilla any more than the next lick, but I don't want to dig my way out of a bloody grave. That's what the Sabbat do to you. Beat you to the brink of death, then bury you. When you start starving, you claw your way to the surface, the madness killing any bit of humanity in you. So I work with the Camarilla against the Sabbat. My past is dead, and I am no longer upon servicing the whims of the elders in their jihad. It ain't good to be alone out there. It helps to have a gang at your back. Especially if you want to find this Ineska. I can't help you find the Giovanni, but I can help you find out about any bootleg shipping. The filthy Setites run all the bootleg shipping in London. I know a Setite knocking shop on the East End. Now let's put the boot into some snakes, but watch yourself. The Setites are a real bad seed. Knocking shop? <laughs> I know you had him in your day, Chris. Even a geezer like you can't be older than the world's oldest profession. <laughs> now come on, we're gonna need some supplies. You can sell some of that old junk and get some real weapons. We require an armorer and an alchemist. And uh, something like that. We have a wide selection of Vitae for your dining pleasure. We have blue-collar brews, white-collar cocktails, and pink-collar daggers. We've got young blood, old blood, tainted blood, and blue blood. We've got innocence, we've got experience, uptown, downtown, Park Avenue matrons, and Bowery wine. Our special of the day is a succulent, free-range virgin, fresh off the bus from Iowa, free of additives and preservatives. You'll find it a tart blend with a crisp and refreshing appetite. All these horseless carriages and electric lights must be too much for your little medieval mind, eh, Chrissy? I have witnessed the perverse experiments of the Tremere, clay that walks like a man, and spirits of the dead. Lights and wagons have no power to enthrall me. Ah, shut up. Who asked you? You'll need me if you want to survive in this world. I should bring you up to date on the modern world, Kristoff. Let's see. Against all odds, peddlers and money changers defeated the priests and the nobles, so now merchants rule the world. Peasants rule themselves by voting on who gets to be king in his court. And some people still believe the world was created in seven days, even though men have walked on the moon. The Lord completed the world in six days, and that means that faith has not died in these 800 years. Unfortunately, not. Oof, I'm damned thirsty. I could go for a lickstick. Lickstick? A mortal. Feeding, you stupid get. We shall not take the lives of those we feed upon. Oh, bugger off. What do you care about the juice bags anyway? As long as we have greater power, we have an obligation to keep them under our protection. You're a fat lot of fun, aren't you? It is important. Okay, okay. No killing when I feed Embrace that tender art of yours, Chris. These damn set-eyed snakes ghoul the working girls and boys and sell them to mortals and kindred alike. Kindred pay to feed on the poor harlots, and the set feed on the mortal customers. The juice bags leave tired, but they never suspect a thing. Cozy as you please. The mistress of the place is a set called Lucretia. She sells some of their ghoul slaves to the Sabbat in America and runs drugs and weapons through those cargo ships of yours. 
Maybe she's picking up some extra cash, moving mud for the fiends. Hey, boys. I've got what you want. Love, you don't even know what I want. Fresh blood. I'll take it back. I guess you do know after all. Don't kill me! I'm not one of the Sedites. I'm from Clan Toreador. Prove it. Who a cry, cry, cry? Uh, you mean the American band Cry Cry Cry? Aren't they that acoustic trio that even though they're all songwriters only does covers of songs by other groups and performs the most depressing- Enough! She's a Tory, all right. Please protect me! I'll help you with whatever you need! Perhaps you will be a valuable ally. Oh, thank you. Thank you for freeing me. I've been trapped in that damn brothel for nearly a year. I was kidnapped by a handsome Sedite who came to see me sing in a club. The snakes wanted you to give the mortals some bloody good fun, eh? Slip them a little taste of Cain's kiss, did ya? Come upstairs. Most mortals love the delirium that comes from being cheeks. a blood donor to a vampire. Especially the way I do it. Where is their leader? We have questions about illegal shipping. That would be Lucretia. She's horribly powerful. She lives in the Temple of Set below the brothel. I can't truly be free of her blood bond until she's dead. If anyone knows about shipping, it's her. She knows everything the Sedites know. Great. How do we get to her? In the storage area. There's a locked door behind a cheesy-looking stage backdrop of the Valley of Kings. There must be some secret way to open the door, but I don't know what it is. Look at old Set gobbling up Osiris. Filthy snakes. Their worship of Set is frightening. I've seen such horrible things. We wish to know of thy shipping routes. <sighs> Slaughter them. Infidels. You will suffer the death of a thousand cuts. of thy shipping routes and free Lily of the bonds of blood. Then we shall part in peace. No. No peace with the Setons. We kill them. Ugh. Quiet, Lubbox. Where do you come from, little one? You seem ancient. Yet you look so young. So young. And so <gasps> foolish, I give nothing, and you have yet to pay <gasps> for killing my worship. What dost thou mean? She is as dead as any canine I have destroyed. 
Pink is right. I still feel the tug of the blood bond. She can't be killed because she's got no art. A lot of these damn snakes do that. They rip out their hearts and stuff them in a jug someplace safe. Then we must find Lucretia's heart. Mayhap we can bargain with it to secure the knowledge of the Prague shipments. Lucretia leaves the brothel a lot to go to a secret haven. I don't know where it is, but I've heard the guards talking about escorting her to the tower. What tower? The Bleeding Tower of London? I think so. I bid you greetings again, Sumner. Greetings, Christoph. I see you've wasted no time in finding new friends. I am somewhat honored to receive such distinguished guests. <gasps> or maybe you're quaking in your slippers, you great puff. Do not test me, blood drinker. I don't think you're quite up. <gasps> Oi! Come on, then! Peace. We mean thee no harm, Sumner Montague. Perhaps you need to keep your coterie on a tighter leash. <gasps> Perhaps. Now let us see thy wares. Of course. My sanctum is at your disposal, for the time being. <gasps> wow. The Tower of London. This place has gone downhill. I guess old Anne Boleyn ain't got much of an head for housekeeping. <laughs> A great evil has been done in this place. The walls cry out in a silent scream. I feel the presence of the dead. Let us hurry. I have no wish to meet the wraiths that walk this bloody tower. Let's return to the Temple of Seth. Mayhap Lucretia will be more agreeable now. Lucretia, thou wilt free Lily from her blood bond. Very well. Lily, you're free to go. Now thou wilt tell us where we may find the Zemitsi, the Giovanni, and the contraband from Prague. I don't know about the Zemitsi. Oh, Giovanni. We just load ships. All I can tell you is that the next ship out is the Saint Magdalena. On 23, laden with guns, heroin, emigrating. And I'll let you leave in peace. Pink, thou shalt return her heart. No way. We have to check her info first. She could be lying. Nay, such a lie would cost her death. Maybe she knows you're a softy. We came here seeking knowledge of the shipments. We have that, so let us go. Okay. Here. Yeah. Destroy this heart and end for. 
forever the wickedness of this foul priestess. Free! I'm free of those revolting snakes! My blood bond is gone! All because of you, Kristoff. And you too, Pink. Ugh, I never knew the smog of London could smell so good. Whither wilt thou go, fair Lily? I have nowhere to go. I came to London from New York looking for my sire, Alexandra Ruthven. She disappeared three years ago. Maybe she was just tired of your whining. Kristoff, I owe you a bigger debt than I can pay. Thou hast done yeoman service. I discharge thee of all duty. I discharge your ass too. Bugger off! I'll gladly travel with you, Kristoff, and fight by your side, and do whatever I can for you. Oh, just what we need. Some moistened Toreador tart. This is a gents club, Bruja only. You are most welcome to join us, Lily. Thank you, Kristoff. I like that very much. I'd love to go with you for as long as you'd have me. Yeah, I'm leader and I say no. I would be honored to have thee. But Toriador's strength may yet help us find my beloved Aneska and restore her to me. Oh, yeah. Anything you want, Kristoff. Help! Help! Stay back. This is between the cops and us. on Alessandro's warehouse. Uh, um, they'll find everything. The guns. The heroin. The Prague contraband. Everything. Please. I'll be damned. The cops are Interpol. What is this Interpol? Kind of an international police force. I changed their IDs to look like us. Cool, huh? Might come in handy once we reach the Big Apple. The Tories finally pulling a weight. I could use someone like you. See some ID now. You're late. Doesn't Interpol teach you to be on time? Good disguises. Or is that what everyone in Europe is wearing now? I'm just glad I don't have to work undercover. So what did you learn? The big boss is Alessandro Giovanni. Thou must, you must attack his warehouse. There you shall find weapons, opium, and the contraband of Prague. Good job. We've had our eye on Alessandro for a while. His warehouse is like a fortress, but our central computer recently cracked his security. We've got the access codes to his fortress safely stored in our secure offline database at FBI headquarters. Now we can raid the place before Alessandro can destroy the evidence. Thanks. Now make yourself scarce before someone sees you. Get back to Europe on the next ship. We shall join thy raid. Uh, thanks, but you've been compromised. We heard your cover got blown after your ship left London. Actually, I'm amazed you survived the trip. 
They put a hit on you and intended to kill you at sea. No, don't worry about the raid. We've got it under control. Now get lost. I must be a good influence on you, you old holy warrior. I got you lying to the coffers like a pro. I lied for Aneska, not thee. And what manner of beast is this central computer that it can besiege fortresses? Wow, but you've got a lot to learn. Well, time to find the local Lex and start calling in favors to get access to that FBI computer. Back off. This is an affair of the Nosferatu. This one was improperly made, and by our laws must be destroyed. Help me, please! There's a boss! I refuse to return, and now they seek to kill me! Thank you. Thank you. I'm in your debt. I am Samuel, of Clan Nosferatu. Locke, we couldn't figure that out from that sphincter you wear for a face. Be still. This is Pink, this is Lily, and I am Kristoff. Thank you. Thank all of you. Man, I should never have come to New York. This place is filthy with Sabbat. I was jumped by my own coterie who got turned to the Sabbat. I was sure I was worse than dead. The Sabbat are turning any vampire they find. They think the world will end this coming New Year's Day. When the calendar turns to the year 2000, they think some ancient evil will rise and kill all the antediluvian vampires. What a load of rot. Every baby lick knows it's the antis who are going to eat us. Are you sure? That's what they said. I heard it a couple of times. Ah, you couldn't hear a thing out of those cauliflowers you got for ears. Nay, this is familiar to me. Perhaps wise Ekaterina hath awakened me to stop our ancient foe. I think pus bag here has infected your brain, Chris. I owe you all a life boon. I'll gladly join you and fight your enemies. Oi, oi, hold on. Who said we'd take you? This is a private club for proper ladies and gents only. Oh, shut up, Pink. I'll never work with a stinky nossy. Peace, Pink. I require allies. <sighs> You better pull your scrawny weight, wrinkles. What can you do besides stink up the place? Well, Pink, I can help you keep your knuckles from dragging on the pavement. Oh, ha, ha. Samuel, aren't thou versed in the lore of the central computer? Uh, no. But I know someone who does. Dev No. He lives here in New York. He's a completely brilliant hacker. Oh, but he's no cave -y. Well, forget it then. Coward! Come on! Look, I'm gonna kick you right in your Sir Anthony Blunt if you call me that again. I just mean we ought to get someone who won't barf all over his keyboard and poke out his own eyes while we watch. Malkavian or not, we shall go to this Dev Null. I can see you never dealt with a Malkavian before. I shall learn. Samuel, take us hence. These are great, but do you have anything bigger? Okay. You want to see the special stock, huh? Modified these myself. Phosphorus round, auto-loading, the works. It's a beautiful thing. I get your kind in here sometimes. Mostly those mobster bloodsuckers. Hey, I don't give a damn what you are. Believe me, I've seen worse in my day. Huh? Hi, Devnal. These are my friends. Have you come from nowhere or from the air one? Devnal, it's me, Samuel. I am not Devnal. I am just a man of tick tock. Oh, okay, sure. I'm Samuel, remember? You are not Samuel. You are Samuel and a triune entity. <laughs> this triune entity is Kristoff, Pink, and Lily. Say hi to him. Hi, Chris, or is it Maliki? Hi, Pink. That's a my stupid name. Hi, Lily. Her mom's at the southern bar of clay. Delight to meet all you John Doe's and Jerry Doe's. Uh, what a gormless nutter. Let's get out of here. Bye. Don't use your knife, Kevin. I mean, Kabar. Or they'll rebuke ya. Hoo-hoo. Yucka. <sighs> Actually, for him, this is pretty lucid. 
Dev, no. We need some help. I'm not Dev, no. I am a rock. I'm a rock. We seek thy aid in unearthing Giovanni lore from the FBI central computer. Canst thou do such a thing? Uh, no. What a conquer. That's it. I'm leaving. Samuel, you worthless Nazi. Just wait, Hank. The site you mentioned is entirely cut off from outside access by use of a separate network backbone that connects the system across the country and prevents unauthorized access. Anyway, that's what Parr says. Oh, okay. Handle with care. You have to slip this Mickey into their Campbell's chocolate fish soup of the sewers, huh? What? Their big ocean of data. Hmm? Then I can catch the codes in my net. <laughs> or my unnet. Or my unnet. It's rickety and uh, empty and waiting for temporary data from the NYPD. Or the MPD. I forget which. This is a data tap. We have to put it on the police computer and it'll beam their data to Dev Null. I am not Dev Null. I am just a lick. A smart a lick. <laughs> Wherein shall we attach this data tap? Randomly. By chance, or in the police sewers on FBI CC line number 204. Sounds easy. But then you have to get away. Free as a jay, scot free. Hope you are loaded for bear or alligator. So you can set up my gator land. Local area network. Ah. I've heard that the sewers all around police headquarters are controlled by an unfriendly Nosferatu called the Underprince. He uses alligators against intruders. So take us to him. Um, no, I can't. He's a bot. Ah, stealth mission then. You're gonna trust this grinning loony? Ralphink is spooked by this mask of Cheshire whimsy? <laughs> Devno, we owe thee a boon. What dost thou wish in return? Mm, me dost wish for, like, peace on Earth and stuff? And a player to be named later. Thou seeks nothing in return for thy service? Turn. Yes. Please return when finished. Vamp till ready. F find the fiend. Could it be that a kindred doth provide help for no gain? Oh well, he is completely nuts. Let us go. See you later, Devnal. Derf. Lovely places you take me to, Chris. Ah, oh, that smell. Oh. Does it offend your widow Toreador nose? Tough Bruiser don't even notice it. I bet Sammy's right at home here, in the garbage. It has a certain honest charm. At least this garbage doesn't pretend it's a tough Bruja. <laughs> Oi! I got my eye on you, hemorrhoid face. Dev Knowles, right? I've been wanting some albino alligator skin boots. Pretty. Ah, Samuel. You belong down here with us. When we crush your coterie, we will make you one of us. Give 
Samuel to us, and I'll let the rest of you live in peace. Great. Take him, please. Never. He's one of us. Pink, I no longer owe you a life boon. I just paid you in full. What? You never. How would you pay me? By not tearing out your tiny heart a second ago. Silence! We shall bury you all under a ton of sewage. Hands and feet tied. And make you eat your way out. We have no need of war with thee. We merely wish to pass through. Oh. ICC line number 204. I hope Devnell's picking up this data. That pathetic weed can't even pick up what day it is. He's completely marbles and conkers. Well, I sure ain't picking up HBO. <laughs> I guess I'll have to stick to my dancing hamster videos. They've changed my life. Or what's left of it. After the Y2K, or not to kill the woozle. Kill the woozle! To save your aunties, let's leave again. They've been lying to you for a long, long time ago. I can still remember how little. <laughs> We're risking our lives here, and he's deliberately wasting our time. Come, let us see if the Malkavian has unearthed hidden wisdom. You pathetic, trusting git. Greetings to thee, shop owner. I am Kristoff. Hello, gorgeous. I hope you see something you want. We wish to see thy wares. I'll bet you do. I wouldn't mind to look at your wares, too. We've got a full line of magic supplies, from ancient relics to new age objects. Ha! Old Kristoff is an ancient relic. So perhaps I require knowledge of thy new age. Anything you want. But I don't know what your friend is talking about. You don't look a day over 300, and you look damn good. As do thy items and oddments. We would know thy prices. Okay, if that's all you want. Here's what I got. Hey, Dev Null! Have you got it? I am not Dev Null. I'm a stalking panther closing in on my prey. A stalking badger. Now then, uh, a bit more omnipower. Yes, uh, open up the anomaly cufflinks. Uh, add a pinch of witch hazel. Poof! Some ammonia tea for flavor. Uh, Dev? Hey, come back to real life. Real life? The life of Rhea? I loathe real life. Whatever that is. I sacrificed real life on the altar of my altered state. Or did I sacrifice the life of Rhea? Or was that her sister? Or her cousin? I forget. I'm gonna kill him. All that for nothing? It was just a stupid prank. I'm gonna tear his sodden head off. You'll have to go through me first, you 80s fashion victim. Oh, Devno, wilt thou give unto us the codes from the FBI central computer? Okay, it's BV72, well, here, I'll just print it out. I thank thee, worthy Malkavian. I am in thy debt. I'm not. We don't know if these codes work on the Giovanni warehouse. That nutter could be sending us right into a trap. Speaking of traps, I also emailed Bill for a pink and fluffy surprise to eat your words. What? Oi! What, what do you mean, trap? What surprise? Mm, let's see. Uh, where was I? Cashmere weather data merged with um, the Library of Alexandria. I added a visit from gods, horses, and drew in amethyst from a sealy court. Speak sense! 
No one pulls my beard and lives. Say what? Ugh. I hate Malkavians. I don't know. I think he's charming. In a paradoxical kind of way. This better not be a trap, or I'll split your cracked head open, you damn bedlamite. Oh my, uh, that's a big job. I'm already dazed and kafir. I thank thee for thy service, noble lunatic. Let us be off. Fare thee well, Devno. Huh? Mad Malkavian was true to his word. Which word? None of them made any sense. Oh, look at all these packs of smack. This must supply half of New York. Or one Hollywood party. What is this smack? I'm not sure how to explain it to someone born before Europe even had tobacco. Just think of it as poison. It's what the juice bags put in their blood when they want to feel powerful as a canine. Then truly it is the stuff of damnation. <sighs> Damn it! I told you to go back to England! Thou hast a strange way of showing thy thanks. Who are you anyway? Sure as hell in Interpol. What was your first clue? Be content to know that for the moment we are thy salvation. I don't want your salvation. Then you're lucky we give it free. <laughs> and what the hell are these Giovanni freaks? They are not just mobsters. Are they some kind of mutants? Oh yeah, sure, mutants. Thou art safe now, George Thorne. We go. I'm coming with you. Thou would surely die. I can handle myself. No. You're bad for business. We're bad for your health. I despise messiness. A prolonged firefight would not let us deal. Deal? With a Giovanni? Huh. Why don't we just cut our heads off for you? Because you're smarter than that. That's true. Well, maybe not pink. You require an arrangement. Hi. Where is Vukodlan? I don't know any such person. Where dost thou send the caskets of Earth? We simply unload them and leave them on the docks. Our client wishes to preserve his anonymity. And now that I have helped you enough, perhaps you could leave me to tidy this mess. Stand, sir. Or wouldst thou arrive in hell squatting upon thy arse? All right, I'll tell you. We sent the shipments to Orsi. Orsi? The self-same Orsi who long ago didst betray us? Liar. He's lying. I sure do love Italian. Thy attack was most premature, Pink. Mayhap there was more the thief could tell us of Orsi. Orsi's got nothing to do with this. Trust me. Trust you? I'd sooner trust the Sabbat. Why didst thou attack him, Pink? Because Pink is a liar and an assassin. Wilhelm, God hath blessed me with thy return. Christoph, you can't trust Pink. He's an assassin from Clan Asamite, and he's working for Vukodlak. He's here to murder you as soon as you are no longer useful to him. He just wants you to kill his Satite and Giovanni enemies. What? That's a damned lie! It makes a lot of sense. Devnol contacted me and told me that the Asamite had gained your trust. He tried to warn you, but you didn't understand him. No one understands him! He's insane! And Christoph, you're as insane as he is if you believe the Sabbat freak's lies. Oh yes, he's Sabbat. He's too busy lying about old Pink to tell you that, huh? It's the truth. Art thou now Sabbat? Yes, it's true, Christoph. I had no choice. The mighty cosmos fell during the great battle in Prague. 
and we became too weak to attain our Promethean goals. We needed new allies, but we refused to join the Ventru and their Tremere and their Masquerade, their Camarilla. Ekaterina is an Archbishop of the Sabbat now, but she fights against the Sabbat who serve Vukudlak. Yes, I am Sabbat, but Pink is no Bruja. Abdul al Hasim, Master Disciple of the Asamites at your service. You must admit, I affected the idiotic Bruja aesthetic with flawless perfection. But now, I must take my leave of you, Christoph. My Takya is finished. The Sumitsi charged me with preventing you from finding exalted Master Vukadlak before he arises. Alas, they did not specify that I had to put my knife into your heart. So, I let you kill my Setite enemies. And taking out that greasy Giovanni boss put the icing on the cake. Despite my best efforts, you came perilously close to finding Vukadlak. But now I have wasted so much of your time that you cannot possibly reach him before he arises, even if you knew where to look. Oh, and Kristoff, sorry I did not help you out of the kindness of my heart, but no sane vampire is that stupid. Farewell, enjoy the new year and the new age. Damn! I wish I could have killed Pink for you. Sorry, Christopher. This is not a time for sorrow, but for rejoicing. I am grateful for the return of my trusted friend, Wilhelm. Wilhelm, my allies are Lily and Samuel. Good to meet you. Forgive me, Wilhelm. I should never have doubted thee. I thank thee for thy timely intervention. Thank Dev now. The little bastard seemed to know everything about everything in this town. He tried to tell you, but... Well, he's not always very clear. The email he sent to Katarina was nearly unintelligible, but we knew that pissed off Kristoff had to be you. Where is Ekaterina? I must thank my mistress for sending me, and for her timely summons. She did wake me from my torpor in time to save me from the society of Leopold. Summons? Ekaterina sent no summons. I suppose she has the power to wake you, but she gave you up for dead a long time ago. Then who? I couldn't say. Will you help us, Wilhelm? Gladly. Ekaterina has directed me to work with you in finding and destroying Vukudlak. Why does she contend against her fellow Sabbat lord? Ekaterina would like to stop the Antediluvians, but if Vukudlak succeeds in rising with the power to consume them, he will become the most powerful being on Earth. He is too unstable to wield that kind of power. It would doom kindred and mortals alike. How horrible. The time for the Fiend's reawakening is approaching. On New Year's Eve, the Tsumitsi Cauldron spell will be broken and he will arise from Torpor. The Prometheans have been preparing for this time. Most of the last millennia has been spent trying to find and destroy him before this could occur. Of course, the Camarilla has taken much of our attention since then. Wilhelm, thou told me of thy passion for the road of humanities. How couldst thou join wicked creatures like the Sabbat? A lot can happen in 800 years. In a way, you were lucky. Lucky to be spared what I have seen, what I have done, what I had to do. There's very little humanity left in me. Then come, let us redeem thy humanity with our good works. Let us put the lie to the assassin and prevent the rise of Ukudla. Then may we cry out to the reverberate hills that we have reclaimed our lost humanity. Yes. It's no business. Prague shipment survived. Delivered to RC International. Profit? 2300%. Note the sales team. Try to get more of this way. You should see Aussie's townhouse, the Barclays South. Great place. And shows he has a lot more liquid assets for us to tap. George Thorne is no longer here. A lot of blood, though. Did he escape? Or... No time for wondering. Let's go.
Go ahead, take the elevator to the top floor. It's the penthouse. It's open and real clean. I don't even think the guy ever lived there. And I mean that. I'm not just trying to sell you the place. I am eager to see Orsi again. I have a gift for him. We seek Orsi. I did business with him long ago, and I owe him a debt. Yeah, then you're about two days too late. He sold the place to me for a song and moved out. Hey, I'm Fred Varney. I'm in real estate. I'm looking for a buyer for the place. Beautiful townhouse, the Barclay South. Moved out? Yeah. He said he'd own the world after New Year's and didn't need just one home. Hey, you going to his party? What party? Oh, sure. Act like you don't know it's New Year's. Come on, you can't fool me. That's why you're dressed up. What means thou? Oh, well, he's on to us, Kristoff. No point in pretending we don't know about Orsi's party. Ah, I see. Yes, his party. Where is it? No idea. You think I got invited? This is for his highbrow friends from the old country. You know, with Euro trash accents. Well, like yours. No offense. None taken. Oh, we lost our invitations. Where is it? No idea. Wish I could help. Can't help. Gotta go. Wait. Got no time. Unless you want to buy Orsi's townhouse. Let us see it. <gasps> what? It's her palette. Her painter's palette. Alexandra Ruffin, my sire. No, I swear it. This palette is covered with blood. She paints with her own blood. Maybe an artist got mugged. No, I'd recognize her style anywhere. The way she mixes clotted blood is utterly unique. The blood is fresh. She may be nearby. Come. Don't kill me. I'm almost done. I, I didn't mean to be late, but I'm so weak. We shall not kill thee. Oh. I, I just need a little more time. And please, more blood. I beg of you, a rat, a little mouse, anything. Alexandra, it's me, Lily. Lily? They've taken you too. Oh, I'd hoped you had escaped. Who hath done this injustice unto you? What? Who imprisoned you here? Your master, Count Orsi. Dry thy crimson tears. We do not serve Orsi. We seek his factory and we crave his death. I don't know where his factory is, only that they're coming to take this portrait there for his private New Year's Eve party tonight. I have to finish. If I don't, they'll kill me. No one will kill you. We'll protect you to the end. The end. The end comes soon. Oh, Lily, how sweet to see you again. And how bitter to find you, only to lose you again. But we can be together forever. No. No, there is no forever. He's returning. We have to get out of New York, out of America. There's no place far enough we can run. Peace, woman. What dost thou mean? For good luck. The Tsumitsu demon they made me paint. They resurrect him this night. And he rises in time to die. Heads up. We've got company. All right. You better be finished, and it better be brilliant. No, it is you who are finished. And that will be brilliant. The address of Orsi's factory. Let us go. My thanks to you, Kristoff. Lily tells me you are a great kindred. We are well pleased with her as well. I'd love to paint you. You have a very noble brow. I owe you everything for saving me. Good luck on your mission. May I go with them, Alexandra? Lily, my lovely thrall. It grieves me to let you go so soon after finding you again. But Orsi must die to free you from your bondage. Go, with my blessings. 
and give Orsi my regards when you crush him like the toad he is. Thank you. Farewell till we meet again, Alexandra. About time you mooks got here with that painting. Yeah, it's almost V-Day. <laughs> Tonight, we build a great silver statue in his honor, and into it we shall place the power of the most ancient blood. By this ritual, shall we rule? So, it is you. We haven't forgotten your deeds in Vienna, Orsi. Bless my soul. The Bruja. Could it be? A Katarina's brew? How extraordinary! Wilhelm, and what was your name again, now? Mark my name well, Orsi. For the devil will wish to know who delivered me into his children's realm. Tell the devil thou wert dispatched from Earth by Christoph Romulus. Christoph Romu, whose soul he shall never possess as long as there is hope beyond all hope in this world. Well, I remember you now, Crusader. You eliminated some competition for me in the old days. That tedious Masoma judgment. <laughs> I remember as if it was yesterday. You escaped my dungeon, you naughty boys. <laughs> we apologize for not killing you then. We'll make up for it today. With a gallon of blood for every drop you've spilled from Alexandra. Ooh, your hate is so delicious. My children... I'll make up for it in a far more valuable treasure than my home. Blood. This is a new era, full of opportunities we could only begin to imagine in the Dark Ages. Then I thought power came from the church. That's why I had you kill Luther Black. Then times changed, and power grew from the Temporal government, but do you know where power really comes from? Huh? You bore me, businessman. Everyone knows that corporations rule today. Rob! <laughs> All mortal power is fleeting. A new age is about to begin. An age where we kingly are restored to rulership of the world. An age undreamed of. And it begins now. Tonight, at the eve of a new millennium. <laughs> the new millennium doesn't begin for another year. 2001. Oh, hush. We know what we're doing. Just think, Crystal. An eternity of perfect power with no antediluvians to keep us in check. Hmm? So, thou art in league with the Fiend. Where is Vukodwak? Oh, you are so judgmental. Vukodwak acts on our behalf. If he does not, your antediluvian grandsire will rise up and drag you into the grave. But Vukadlak can pull them up first and feed upon them. And who will stop him then? Stop him? He'll share power with you. He'll bestow our rightful heritage as the true gods of the earth. I can get you. Place at the table with him. Your old friend has joined him willingly, and you can too. What was her name? 
The little nun? Nesca. That was it. No. Where is Vukadlak? That we cannot tell you. We shall find the fiend without you. Thou hast earned it. As thy sire has earned death. Wait, Crusader. The fiend is below the blackened church to the north. There you'll find him, below, in his cathedral of flesh. Little good this will do you now. As he arises in but a few moments. I fall now as I did then. Ah, but then was I not yet a prisoner. Your untimely intervention set me back nearly a millennium. But I love with your patience. And now I am omnipotent. Nay, for we have denied the Orsi statue for thy ritual. I'll live. We shall stop thee. It's over, Crystal. I have already risen, with power enough to consume even antediluvians. No! But I must extend my gratitude to you, Crystal. My former cousin, the Boost, lacked a certain purity. But Eska, ah, her virtue bubbles up from so rich a spring that I have been endlessly supplied with purity. To defile. <laughs> I would never have found her without your assistance. You sent her to me, and she has been so loyal and willing a servant to me over these long years. I shall now embrace her, and she will rule with me over the cattle of humanity for all time. Nay, Aneska is not thine. She serves thee not. She sent a summons to awaken me from torpor. Is this true, Aneska? Dear master, please allow me to split Kristoff's joints and fleshcraft his bones into a throne for thy glory. <laughs> Monster! I'll destroy thee. I have a better idea. Serve me. I know thou art wicked, but I never thought thee a fool. Serve me. You don't really have any love for the Antiquarians, do you? The day of the head is coming, and they intend to consume you, and Wilhelm, and Lily, and all other vampires. I will prevent that. I will give you eternity, life everlasting. We will greet the awakening grandsires with another flood, a deluge of their own blood! One antediluvian is no better than thirteen. I cannot entrust such power unto any, let alone thee. Then suppose I gave you 
your beloved Lesca as well. What? Consider this. Even if you could destroy me, which you cannot, you would destroy her as well. Remember, she is my ghoul, and after all these centuries, she is utterly dependent on my blood. If I die, she shatters into thousand-year-old dust. But serve me, and I'll give her to you. What say you? Nay, I shall fight thee to stop thy mad scheme, even at the cost of my life. To the abyss with thee. You have no hope of winning. I have hope beyond hope. I have no more patience for you. Your skin and bones will add to the walls of my cathedral of flesh. I am the wall of memory. I contain the secret thoughts of Inezka. I am damned. In the holy orders, I once dreamed of the eternity of bliss that would be mine for my devotion to the Lord. Eternity is now mine, but not bliss. I shall live as long as a voivod, or as long as a voivod is pleased with me, or as long as a voivod is pleased to defile me. Heavenly bliss is not to be my lot, only empty torment. Yet still I dare to hope, still I live. Oh. Aneska. I have lived for fifty years. All I loved are dead and gone. My beloved Kristoff has perished in the fall of Visserod. His sacrifice has preserved innocence in the world, and so I rejoice. But my suffering grows with each passing night. The Voyevod takes great delight in seeing me rise with fresh hope, for it means he may once again drag me down. Should I surrender all hope and break as the Busa is broken, his pleasure would be at an end. Yet I will not abandon my hope, even though such hope fills his empty heart with glee, as it fills mine with pain. I cannot bear it. For more than 200 years, I have suffered every possible form of humiliation and defilement. I have fallen from the chaste and inviolate woman I once was, yet I have borne it all with hope in my heart. But now, I am sinking into the murky depths, and the last whisper of hope in me is fading like the final bubbles of breath from a drowning woman. As we grow close to the day of his resurrection, Vukadlak has found the only defilement I cannot bear. He has decreed that I inflict defilement on others by binding innocent men and women into the walls of his accursed cathedral of flesh. His power compels me, and I cannot resist a direct command. I can endure my own degradation, but I cannot abide to befoul others. I fear I shall shatter like glass. My poor, poor Aneska. This is my doing. Every humiliation she suffers is on my head. Kristoff, you can't blame yourself for the choices she made. Aye, perhaps thou art correct. It's not your fault. You have to move on. It is two centuries and a half after Vukudlok took me, and his resurrection draws nigh. He now demands that I surrender the final shreds of my honor and perform evil acts of my own volition. I cannot defy my master's command that I defile others, and when I resist him, my poor body carries out his tasks against my will, like a puppet. He's driving me mad, so I must change. 
Rather than resist the evil I am compelled to do, I now embrace it and perform my tasks with zeal. The master favors me, and as I embrace his evil, he gives me greater power. I have been Lebusa's equal since my arrival. Now shall I take over her duties, gladly trading the final measure of my innocence for control over the Voivod's worldly affairs. Tis the only way. <gasps> oh no! She gave up! I'm so sorry, Kristoff. Kristoff, are you okay? I mourn for her soul. I have now lived more than 300 years past my natural lifespan. I have committed atrocities beyond all imagining, but my plan has succeeded. Though Vukodlak has extraordinary power, his exile from the world makes him weak. He must act through Labusa, who wields great power within our haven. But in just a few years, I have usurped all of Labusa's power and left her a wretched outcast in the cathedral of flesh she helped build. Long ago, the Voyevod stripped her of her soul and gave her power in exchange. Now that I have taken away that power, she is a pitiable creature indeed. She has no place here, yet she cannot leave. I would lament her fate, but I have no tears to shed, even for myself, for Resurrection Day draws nigh. Ugh, that gives me the creeps. This is supposed to be the purest woman in the world? Uh, Lily, I think you should really zip it. I'm only trying to help Kristoff get over... Zip it! <sighs> You're right, Kristoff. I'm so sorry. You must be feeling awful. I wish I could... My feelings be damned. Tonight, we slaughter every denizen of this foul place, or die in the attempt. On the eve of his resurrection, Vukodlak bade us slaughter the Premisel leaders, even as they began the ritual that would raise him from torpor. I have learned well the lessons of corruption, for I have turned my hand to the corruption of the Voyevod's resurrection. In the guise of offering wise counsel to Vukodlak, I poison his heart against those who could speed his resurrection. I accuse the faithful of disloyalty. I accuse the powerful of dangerous ambition. I praise the weak and ineffectual, like the merchant Toad Orsi, as obedient servants. Vukodlak's fear of losing power is far greater than his hope of gaining new power, and so he believes every doubt I whisper in his ear. And so he crushed his own resurrection. Wow. She sacrificed her innocence to stop Vukatlak. Vukatlak's rage is implacable. His resurrection has failed so often that he blames all the Semitsi of Europe. He desires to move our entire Cathedral of Flesh to the New World where we may begin again. This vast undertaking will involve many shipments of native soil. I am well pleased, for this foolish migration shall take at least a century and further postpone his resurrection. Alas, I fear I can no longer prevent the Voivod's awakening. Lord Vukodlak has gained great power from the fear and apprehension of foot in the world on the eve of the new millennium. These fears feed him, and despite my greatest efforts, his resurrection is now inescapable. There are none who can help me. I can only hope against hope for the return of the one man Vukodlak fears. I pray that God restores Kristoff. Come with me quickly. I can help you. Why should I enter thy trap, servant of the fiend? 
Please, for Aneska. She says that if you would have hope, even when your cause is lost, you should follow me. I go, but I go with my sword at thy back. Go now, there is little time. Destroy him, and topple this vile cathedral. Now, my dark love, I give you thanks for allowing me to serve you all these years, watching over your sweetly cruel visage in Torpor. Is complete. You survived my hosts. Impressive, your crusade. You have earned something few have seen. Your final vision shall be that of my true form. Watch as I reveal the absolute power of the Vibod! to her, Kristoff. Now that the Fiend is no more, my unnatural power dissolves. I fear for my soul after my defilement, after all that I have done. But I rejoice that my last sight shall be thee. I only pray that one day I may attain thy forgiveness. I grant all forgiveness, though thou art blameless and pure in mine eyes. Then death finds me in joy and rapture. Aneska, my accursed soul trembles to utter these selfish, blasphemous words. But thou need not die if thou wouldst endure. Thou wouldst still have me, Kristoff. I scarcely dared hope. Thy love has redeemed me across a thousand years. I would that I could offer salvation in return, but I have none to give, only damnation. Damnation with thee would be sweet as salvation. Let thy love cast me down and raise me up forever. Take me, my love.